Hello and welcome to the Nash Tackle Off The Hook podcast. This week's guest, star of YouTube, Mr Forbidden Roots himself, Jack Thompson. But before we get Jack, I've got Mikey Wilson. Welcome to some Nash news, mate. How are you? I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm living the dream, aren't I? I'm in the studio with you. Doesn't get much better. We're still not done a podcast. It's coming though, isn't it? Eight, 18th. The date is in the diary. The date is in the diary. It's Just... been moved twice, I think. I think. <laughs> but it's happening. I think it might have been moved, mate. But like the best things, they're worth waiting for, aren't they, mate? And... Big news from you, mate. Big news. You get married soon, aren't you? Oh, I thought you were going to say sad else. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, four days. Four days. Four days. How does it feel? Good, mate. I'm excited. Yeah? Good life. I said I wasn't nervous. The closer it's getting, the more nervous I'm definitely getting. But I'm also, yeah, I'm buzzing. I can't wait. It's so, really ladies, up. by the time this goes out, it's too late. <laughs> I'm lucky. But, um, yeah. Wah, you, get... Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> you get to see him on YouTube. Big news this week. When we're recording this, Burfield Commons been out. Hashtag Simon Scott, BC. Mega. Mega cup. Mega, mega, mega cup. If you could pick one, would you pick that as your number one at the moment? <sighs> what was that? I can't even think of the... F- no. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> no. <laughs> I couldn't think of what it was called. What was that cup we spoke about? Last time we'd done the news, it was oh, like the that, linear from... Um, that linear. From uh, Dinton. Yeah. Yes. What? In terms of the way a fish looks, I'd go with the linear. But I think what makes obviously the Burfield Common so special is the journey, the the, the way to catch it, the, the missions you have to go on, and the time and effort you have to put in. Something that I would never do. No, personally, no. I like getting bites, mate, and I couldn't sit. But I, I think Burfield as well is you can get bites. I don't. I don't really know too much about Burfield, mate. To be completely honest with you, <laughs> what a great intro this is. <laughs> Let's just start. This might be Let's... why. This might be why the podcast has been rescheduled with him quite a few times. <laughs> He's got to do a bit of research into his own fishing. Um, no, but there is there is some backup fishing there. But obviously, the, the task is the place is so fragmented. It's an absolute effort to get round. It is. It's hard grafting all sorts of ways, and that fish. Like if you're fishing, if you're targeting one fish, it's anyway. time as well. Yeah, it's, oh, I, I don't have that time no. to fish for that for, to fish for that carp. I genuinely don't. Like, right. I'm going to give you the time. Would you do it? What a fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Just no, not the one. Of course, of course. If I could, if I could have, say, if someone said to me, you could have, I don't know, three nights a week, mm. not overnighters, like proper three proper nights a week. Go and have a go, then 100%, mate. 100% I'd go and have a go. But in my current situation, impossible, mate. Yeah. I, I don't know. Burfield, two hours from here, I reckon. It's Reading, isn't it? So two hours from Essex, maybe, give or take, without traffic. Yeah, not for And you. I only mainly fish overnighters, so, yeah. You could have Pissing an overnighter. There, hey, it can happen, mate. Do you know what I mean? On an overnighter, it could happen. I think if you uh, if you want it enough, mate, you could go there for an overnight, a couple of pug chucks, and it might happen. <laughs> Joe Morgan did. He, he hooked it on a... On it, a on, I remember, yeah, yeah. That, he said it on his podcast, didn't he? When he was filming... Yeah, I think he was filming back record, in the day. Yeah. yeah, fair play. Could happen. It, could happen. Mate, as long as your rods are in the water, you've got a chance, yeah. haven't you, at the end of the day. But no, it's a mega, mega carp, mate. One I would like to catch, but I probably never will. Because no. I'll never fish there. I will never have the time. And... And getting a ticket is like rocking all shit, isn't it? So, mate, fair play to anybody who takes on that challenge. Simon Scott, incre- incredible bloke, incredible angler. And He's been after it years it. as well, hasn't he? Years. Yeah, like, if anyone's going to catch it, it's him, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's some incredible anglers that have gone through that complex that's still on there now that will catch it and hopefully they'll all have their time. But as you say, as a fish, as a prospect, it's not for the faint hearted, is it? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> not for me. I'll probably leave that one on yeah. the bottom of the list. Yeah. But what is interesting about the capture is symmetry wise, I know that Greg Ellis caught it previous to Simon pretty much well to the sort of day, couple of days in the same window the year before. Okay. With regards to the carp, carp that you've targeted in the past, because you've done a bit of targeting mm. fish. Have you looked into that sort of symmetry? Have you tried to be on the water or in the right swims at the same time? Or has it been sort of you just fished it and it's come when it's come? Recently, sort of fished. I, I I just go fishing when I can go fishing. Yeah. Like if I get a night and I can go, I'll go. I, I sort of gone on the days where I can sort of plan two, three weeks in advance. I'm going to do two overnighters that week, three that because it's work, life. Some every, something just comes up and gets in the way, so I can go. My gear is always ready that I can go at a drop of a hat, as and when I've got the time. But a funny story actually regarding sort of a, a capture. Oh, it must have been. 
five years ago now. I was fishing a little lake in Stanford Lee Open. There was a fish in there called the Pearl, which was ridiculously old. I think it was stocked in like 1971, something crazy. And before, when I joined, I actually found out that it had been caught on the 3rd of September, the two years previous. My missus went away to Vegas, I think it was, on a girl's holiday, and it just so happened that she was away for the week. I think it was like the end of August she went and she'd come back sort of early September. So I had sort of this window and I was like, brilliant. So I booked a little bit of time off work, got down to the lake, and sort of had been fishing the same swim, been baiting it. And yeah, at two o'clock on the morning, in, in two o'clock in the morning on the 3rd of September, I caught the pearl. So three years in a row, it came out on the 3rd of September. I don't know if it did the year after that, but there's a lad called Ben Allen who actually works for Corda. And we was chatting on the 2nd of September about the pearl and he was fishing around the corner up one of the other pegs. And when I actually got it in the net, I remember walking around to him, it was about two o'clock in the morning and he was actually awake. He'd just had one. I said, Ben, you ain't going to believe it. He was like, you haven't. I was like, mate, it's in the net. And we were just, I was just knowing you just so, what, like, freaky stuff happens, man. And it's I, mad, I don't think it? that, is that a coincidence? Three years in a row? I don't think so. <laughs> like, it can't be. Well, unless there's more people fishing at that time because they've heard it's come out or whatever. But essentially, what I'm saying to you is, you said overnight is you never take on Burfield. If you could get the ticket, just turn up at the right date, mate, yeah. and chuck yeah. it out and it's done, isn't it? As I said, Roger <laughs> in the water, you've got a chance, mate. Like, no, it's incredible angling. Uh, well done to anyone who's caught it. Simon Scott, massive congratulations. Everybody's congratulated him. It's an incredible feat of angling and what a fish to hold for an album, mate. Yeah, like I say, mate, I think the journey towards catching that carp mm. mate, is, yeah, is the, the amount of effort you see anglers put in to catch that fish is incredible. And Yeah, I'm... Definitely too lazy to do that. <laughs> Honest. I love the intro, Mikey. Cheers for coming no in, worries. mate. I'm going to go and get Jack out and we'll wait further down the line for your podcast, boy. Sound, mate. See you soon. Jack, welcome to the Nash Tackle Off The Hook podcast, mate. Thank you for coming in. Thank you very much for having me. Not at all, mate. How have you been recently? What have you been up to? Um... What, fishing-wise? Or just... Yeah, just general, mate. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, just being busy, mate, really, to be fair. Life's, life's been busy with work, training, um, and getting some fishing in, you know, as, we, uh, as we do. Um, you told me before, when we talked, as you were coming in, Yep. you said training there. Yeah. Boxing, mate, isn't it? I do do a little bit of boxing, yep. Well, a little bit of boxing. It's turned into most of my life now at the moment. <laughs> has it? <laughs> it really has, yeah. Um I know it's not a boxing podcast or anything like that. You know, I just started, um, wanted to earn a bit of money for charity, run um, like half marathons and things like that, and then just uh, wanted to try something else, a little bit different. And um, yeah, started boxing about three years ago now. Done um, play. done a uh, charity event, um, trained really hard for it. Mm. And um, I was, I'd done a little bit beforehand as well, so, you know, in, in other gyms. And um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it didn't last very long, that one, so I wanted to get stuck in again. So, um, yeah, three three years down the line, I've been training for it the whole time, and, but COVID's got in the way of my next one. But Yeah, yeah you'll get um, back out there, mate. Half yeah. marathon's not hard enough, so let's take on some boxing. I like yeah, that. Yeah, do you know what? I've done two of those now, and um, oh, they're, they're a bit of a... They do <laughs> test you, though. Um, and in terms of work, we talk, you talk there about work. Yep. For you, what is day-to-day work? Because you're not a full-time angler or... Um, or or sort of, yeah, involved in any sort of full-time angling profession, are you? I'm not, no. Um, I, know, I still have an uh, eight-to-five job. You know, yeah. I've, uh, I'm a carpenter slash builder, basically, and, um, yeah, work's busy as ever. Which yeah. means that everything we're going to talk about is even more impressive, mate. So, Well, yeah, you've got to find the time from somewhere, haven't you? You um, do well. Which, you know, especially trying to fit all that in day-to-day, uh, day-to-day life, um, and hold down the missus and <laughs> hold down the missus sounds like domestic <laughs> violence. I know what you're saying. Yeah, That's you know, good. it's um, yeah, no, it's 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 a bit of a test, but you know, we get a, we got to make time, haven't you, for things yeah, that you enjoy? You've done well, mate. I think. Where I want to start with you is is definitely your YouTube channel because that's probably where I saw your angling and your content first and foremost. Forbidden Roots. Yep. The channel, looking back, is around sort of four or five years old. Is it? Uh, about four years ago, I think I put four the first video out. Yeah. So talk to me about how that that came to be, because obviously four or five years ago, YouTube was it was about, but it wasn't as prominent as it is now. No. Um. No. So tell me how you decided to sort of 
take the plunge and film your um, angling? Well, um, I just wanted to get into photography, really. You know, you're seeing all these um, these wicked shots out there of, uh, you know, carp and scenery and stuff like that. So um, one of my mates had just, just brought himself a camera and, um, you know, I f- thought I'd follow suit. And um, I had no idea what I was doing with a DSLR. Um, and But purchased one anyway. I've uh, got a little nifty 50, little f- fixed lens. And, um, yeah, I'd, I sort of started using using that camera to film things instead um and it was pretty sharp mate to be fair for just a cheap old i had a canon 750d or something like that you know it wasn't gonna break the bank or anything but um yeah done the job and um yeah so i just started started trying to put things together in edits and stuff like that and um i thought i can i can make my first video here um, with especially with what I'd been up to at that point, um, uh, fishing these types of venues, um, and there wasn't much like that on YouTube at the time, you mm-hmm. know. Which I thought, you know, this might might do all right. Um, it's, it's a different style of angling, isn't it? There was no one out there doing it, and um, so yeah, I thought I'd make a first video about it and and see see where it went, and um, yeah, here we are now. Yeah, four years down the line. Yeah, Forbidden Roots, the name, I like it. Yeah. Where did that come from? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, at that at that point, I was fishing a few few lakes, which um, you know they, they weren't, you know, not breaking into people's back gardens or you know, cropping bolt uh, with bolt croppers, mate, taking the old padlocks off or anything like that. You know, it's just old wild wild waters or whatever. And um, I was fishing them, and you know, I just thought, you know, what what's a what's what what's the name for my first video and I'm not quite sure how I came up with it, to be honest. But you know, it's one of those things, isn't it? Once it once it clicks, it. Um, I was like, yeah, no, that sounds all right. That's but a good one. Now, later on, four years down the line, I'm I'm now sort of thinking, should I have called it that? You know, it, it does it does it affect does it affect my progress in the industry or or, uh, or anything like that? You know, because I sort of labelled myself as that 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 style of angler, haven't I? So it's. Well, I don't know, labels are there to be sort of tarnished yeah. and changed and whatever yeah. else, mate. So I think which I have tried. I've tried yeah. over the years to sort of broaden that channel now and um and sort of bring a a much more wider variety of, of, of videos to my channel now. So Definitely um, so. Tried. You know, no, still, you've done a sometimes good job. I still, you know, get back to that that's you said there about the industry. So you said, is that going to affect you as an industry? When you started that channel four years ago and YouTube was a sort of a formative stage and gathering momentum, especially within the industry, was there a plan to, to then make the industry part of your life in a professional context or not? No, no, not really at all. You know, I just wanted to put out a couple of videos. Um, I enjoy it. That's the thing. You know, yeah. I, I don't do it for you know, to, to to gain anything from it. I actually enjoy sitting down and, and editing my videos and that people hate hate the editing process and but um I sort of prefer I sort of hate the, the filming part of it now, but I, mm. I enjoy making that into something when I get back, you know. Um which like I say, yeah, didn't had no structure to it or anything like that. It was just just you quite know, organic then, really. Yeah, just sort of, you know, progress as we go along sort of thing. And all your skills in editing and everything, that was all picked up, self-taught along the way as well? Never been taught a thing by anyone. That's um, impressive. That is probably why a few of my videos aren't aren't that professional. You know, well, well, I say they're not that professional. I mean, they've got better over the years. But, yeah, if you look back at some of them, like they're all going in and out. They still do now, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's, if that's... I'm not, I haven't got a crew there with me that are... Uh, that are saying, right, that's overexposed, underexposed, or anything like that. I have to, I'm trying to nail that as I'm doing it. So, you know, that's, yeah. sometimes it just has to come across as, or I have to put it out how it is, you know. But yeah. I think that's the beauty of it, isn't yeah. it? Your channel, it's raw, it is how it is. Is As an angler, that you don't necessarily need all the thrills and everything no, that is no, a, a big production. It's, it's rawness and it's, and it's yeah. real. And I do try and tell that story um, exactly how it is. You know, when I don't try and add bits in or do other things with my. When I'm when I'm sitting there and it's recording me, I do try and um, yeah tell it how it is and how it is, has actually happened. So there's yeah. no adding bits in or anything. So, and your journey before this YouTube channel in terms of your angling, yep, you always been sort of a carp angler or have you been an all round angler? Have you been based in a certain region? Talk to me about how it came to the point where you thought, right, well, now's the time that I think I'm proficient enough, happy enough, and and I want to document my angling in video form. Yeah. 
I've fished most of my life. You know, I've always grown up in small villages or um, I'm not not now, but um, I have done and I've, I've fished, yeah, sticklebacks, you know, <laughs> on tiny little streams and things when I was like five years old. Um, and then fishing, fishing little streams where my mate lived, catching perch and trout and things like that, you know, on floats and... Yeah, um, carp fishing, sort of, I got more into it in, like, sort of secondary school, times like that, you know, um, um, summer holidays. I could always remember, like, we'd, we'd, me and my mates, we'd always uh, meet up in the morning, we got our BMXs, we'd got, gone down to Tesco's in the morning, <laughs> bought, like, 50 loaves of bread, ride into the, uh, ride into, like, the little runs waters around with, and then just, yeah. Absolutely turfing in loaves, mate, all over the shot, and uh, and catching as many fish as we could each day. But then things progress from there, don't they? Um, and started wanting to catch bigger fish, and and uh, yeah, try different venues. Yeah, it's always that element, especially in the stuff you've done that I've seen, obviously YouTube wise. Is it's just quite a lot of moving between venues. There's little targets here and there, but there's a lot of movement within yourself. Have you always been one to sort of? Yeah, not stay necessarily close to home and look for adventures here, there, and everywhere. Yeah, no, that is a massive part of my fishing now. Like, um, it has to be an adventure for me. Um, I'm, I can't. I find it really hard to sit behind static rods. You know, I, I'm, it's just not for me. You know, um, if I have to, I will, and I've done it. You know, over the years. But if I could sit behind three rods and just hope something's out there feeding right, and try and just make something happen or go off and potentially try and catch something just with my six foot, my sawn off mate. And just, um, yeah, and try and sight fish for something. And that's the buzz. That's the kicker I get out of fishing, you know, mm. and, um, you know, each to their own, but that that's what I love. And, uh, that's how I sort of managed to capture the fish that I'm after quicker than I think if I was sitting behind rods, you know? Yeah. And you quite like, Unknown quantities. No, that's quite a, a quite a consistent theme in your angling. You're not necessarily fishing for named fish on busy waters. No, you like that. Yeah, I do. Um, don't get me wrong though. I, I've I've done my fair share of it. You know, growing up, I've um, I've done match angling. I've done um, uh, you know, I've, I've fished on all these sort of day ticket waters. I've fished a lot of them through the country, and um, I just I just love that wilderness. You know, I love being out there in the elements on my own. Um, not necessarily on my own, if I've got a mate or whatever, but it's, you know, it's that it's raw, isn't it, when you're there? You know, you're on a river or something like that, you've got to cut a little swim out, start prepping these spots and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, I'd not unknown fish, you know, because people have caught them or whatever in the past. But, yeah, I, I, what buzzes me is if you want to catch these fish, you've got to go through exactly the same effort as what I've put in to catch them. Like that—that that gives me a buzz, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I do. I graft at my fishing, and I always have done. Um, do you reckon that's part of this sort of athlete in you as well? Yeah, I've. Yeah, I don't do things half-heartedly at yeah. all. Like, if I'm going to do it, I, yeah, I go in, yeah, I go in big time. But um, but again, that's just that's just sort of who I am, really. You know, I'd like to get a bit more fishing in that at the moment, but you know, life's. Life gets in the way a little bit, yeah. yeah. Talk to me about YouTube. So, uh, first and foremost, I think when I think YouTube, I think sort of comments and sort of how things are perceived in the wider public. Yep. How, how are you in terms of reacting to positivity and negativity on, on videos with regards to comments um, and things? At the beginning, um, you, you do take things to heart, don't you? If you do, look, you could get 100 comments or whatever and... Um, majority of 98% of them would be nice comments when I say wicked video or whatever and then you get a couple and uh, you know that sort of gets you down doesn't it but yeah it's you sort of you learn to live with that don't you after um, yeah the further you progress in that sort of that sort of industry that the YouTube era mate you don't really uh, yeah it doesn't really bother me anymore to be fair and to be honest I don't really get that much negativity I actually don't I mean there's there's always a couple isn't there uh, that try and kick up a fuss, but to be fair, at the end of the day, they're just, they're just, um, you know, they're either jealous, mate, or, 
or they're they're going to give that they're going to give that venue or something that they're moaning about away even more. They're going to bring a lot more light to that place, aren't they? Yeah. If they're going to kick up a fuss about it. But I try. I just stay quiet. I don't. I don't even. Um, I don't even give them the time of day anymore. Don't reply to stuff like that. Um, yeah. It's just sort of. It is what it is. Nature it? of the beast, isn't yeah. it? I suppose everyone in the industry's had it, right? Not, yeah, so I think this. Yeah. I can't remember who it was, but I get a comment about being um, Eddie Munster or something off the Munsters. <laughs> I think that's a great shout. Forgive me because I forgot your name, but that is good banter. Well done. <laughs> I wish I was him and a childhood star, mate. Yeah. I'd be all right. Yeah, I'd rekindle my career and go back on the Munsters. <laughs> um, um, in terms of YouTube now, you're yep. uh, however many subscribers, but you're in the you're over ten thousand subscribers, well in excess of. Yeah. Did you think when you started the channel that you'd you'd get to to that sort of level of, of following? No, to be honest, I didn't. And it, it it's it's a long old process, YouTube. You know, uh, people think it's, it's you just go out there, you film it, and you stick it on it, stick it on the channel. It's it's a lot of work. I think I was saying to my missus the other day about it, and I was saying like, even if that's your full time job, like fair play, you know, to get out out of bed in the morning, go and film that, come back, edit it, and then get it get it onto you onto your channel. It's it's hard work. It really is, especially if you're putting out 30-minute videos or something like that. It's a lot of work that goes into that. Um, but, yeah, I didn't... Uh, I've gone off target a little bit here, haven't I? What was that? No, you're all right, mate. We were talking about your, the development of it and if you thought it would get to yeah, so, the level it's got to. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I didn't really, to be fair. I, I thought, you know, it might get a little bit of interest with uh, people that know me or whatever. And, um, yeah, now it's sort of... It's, it's, it's blowing up a little bit now. So, Do you get uh, recognised out and about? Always. If I go oh. to if I go to um, uh, day tickets, like tackle shops, always, mate. Um, especially down that? near me. Um, but even when I've been uh, I've been abroad and stuff, mate, and people have even like I'm sitting in sitting on a little bar in Turkey or somewhere like that, <laughs> and someone's someone's actually said, "Oh, you that you that guy on YouTube and stuff like that." I've, I've had it, I've had it a lot, mate. Actually, especially over the last sort of year. How'd you take channels. that? Yeah, I'm just. I was like, oh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, as well. Everyone's been positive about it. Um, but yeah, I'm on the lake at the moment, um, which is quite close to home, and I've spent quite a long time trying to get a ticket for it. Mm. I've sort of stayed quiet because it's quite clicky on there. I've just got the ticket, and um, yeah, and I didn't know how it was quite going to go. Um, but yeah, everyone's been really friendly on there, mate, to be fair, you know. Good. Make sure I'm sticking to the rules. So, like, because it is that clicky that you probably, you know, you probably get shafted really quickly. But, um, yeah, so make sure everything's, you know, tip top. And, yeah, everyone's been, um, everyone's been great. You know, I can't, I've never bumped into anyone that's gone, you know, yeah. I hate what you do or, or, or anything like that. No, nah, they're really good videos, man. I thoroughly enjoyed watching them before, but also in the research for this podcast. For you and your angling. Yep. And we're going to go into some some epic sort of chapters in, in your fishing. But has filming it, as opposed to just being able to sort of go out and fish like somebody would that is working and has got some leisure time, do you think that's detracted at all from your fishing, the enjoyment of it or the buzz or, or not? I think it actually adds to it. Like, wh- the worst bit is carrying around the, the equipment. Mm. It really is. But... um the you know once you've caught that fish and you've got when you're holding that up and you're filming that i think that that adds to it because you know that you can you can watch that back you know it, that gives me a buzz when you're uh, yeah, editing that and you're looking at that and you're going yeah i caught that you know mm. once you've just slipped it back you're not filmed it or anything that's it memory gone isn't it well not memory gone you know it's always going to stick with that memory but you can't you can never watch that back can you if, if no one's no one's filmed it for you um but yeah no i I think I think the worst part is carrying the equipment around. Yeah, um, I used to have like my stalking bag and you know my rods, and then have another rucksack. But since uh, Nash had brought out the uh, the old water boxes, I use them now. Um, Smash it all in I there. Just, yeah, I just put my camera in there, and I just take my. I've got a tiny little drone now. I've got one of the uh, the mini twos instead of having a bloody great thing. Yeah. And it makes such a difference, you know. You can get it all in a little compact thing, and I'll get it in my scope rucksack along with my tackle box, and that's made a big difference. So it's, um, yeah, it, that's not. It's not so much of a hindrance now. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. That's all. I. That's all I say is yeah. Making sure you've got the gear with you all the time. Make sure that's 
that can sort of uh, yeah throw things off a little bit, especially after work. If it's nice and sunny, something like that. That's what like I would go fishing, try and catch one like stalking or whatever. If I haven't got my camera, I won't go. Right, you got to that point. Yeah, I won't go because I know I'll catch that fish that I'm after, <laughs> and I won't have my camera. Yeah. So yeah. In that thing, yeah, I suppose it does muck up my fishing, doesn't it? But um, I just want, yeah, I need to capture these things, don't I? Especially if I want my channel to progress. And, yeah. You know. So what's the long-term plan for the channel then? Obviously, it's, it's a good channel. It's big. The content is better and better. Thoroughly entertaining. Yeah, cheers. What's the long-term vision, mate? I don't really have one, mate, to be fair. Yeah. Well, I would love to get to that point, you know, that where um, all I'm doing is going around going around fishing hopefully have someone there <laughs> to film it for me or whatever but if if it got to that point i probably wouldn't just be carp fishing either you know if i've if i've got to that point i'll probably be traveling fishing and then having someone else do the filming for me i mean that's the dream isn't it that's yeah. is the dream but um you know will it ever get to that point i don't know um i'd love it to don't get me wrong but um yeah i don't We'll see what the future holds. See, just work hard, uh, isn't it, I suppose? And um, yeah. I try. I do try. Some, like I say, life gets in the way, doesn't it? But um, at one point last year, I was really giving it a go and putting videos out like, sort of every week or whatever. And the channel does does do a lot better when you, you're more frequent. But mm. um, it's hard. It's balance, isn't Stay it? Stay consistent with yeah. it. It's, um, yeah. My last sort of question, if you like, it's quite a broad one around YouTube, um, is... <laughs> you said there, you sort of insinuated that there is now an aspect in the industry where people can YouTube and that could be a profession. Carl and Alex, prime example of, yep. of two lads who've done it. They're smashing it now as well, um, aren't they? Absolutely smashing unbelievable. it. Unbelievable. Like, they're, they're literally from the same county as me as well. It's the county thing. Yeah. You've, got to be in that, you've got to be in your county. <laughs> um, no, but a prime example there of, of sort of younger lads who've done it. And there is a there is a generation now of sort of younger people who rather than maybe the influences that I've got, they've got different influences, Carl and Alex being one of them. And that, that is an ambition and something to strive at. For you, because you've done so well at carving your niche with Forbidden Roots, what advice would you give to those type of people to make, to, to essentially what to take and how to go about starting a YouTube channel and doing it and what to do to make that YouTube channel different from everything else and give them the best chance to to hopefully achieve the dream yeah. that you've talked about. I actually get that question quite a lot mm. on my social media. Um, and th- what I always say to them is um, don't worry about how it looks. You know, don't, don't worry about the editing process or anything like that. Just make sure you're capturing that moment. So don't worry about the equipment you're using. That all comes in time, doesn't it? Um, you know, the more money you earn, you can sort of upgrade. You can upgrade your tools, can't you? Um, but yeah, if it's an iPhone you've got or whatever, just make sure you're capturing that moment and, um, and, and just enjoy it. You know, if you, if you're not enjoying it and you're like making those videos and editing them and putting them out, it's, I mean, why are you doing it? Mm. it, it like, for, I mean, that, that's the way I look at it. You know, I actually enjoy it. So, um, yeah, just enjoy what you do and, uh, and, and don't worry about sort of the quality of the videos that you're putting out at the beginning because... I mean, it stinks, doesn't it? Mine, mine were shocking, mate, at the beginning. They weren't shocking, mate. Were well, they? I look back at it and I cringe, mate, at some of the stuff that I've put out. But, you know, my channel wouldn't be where it is now without doing that. So, yeah, like um, you said, it's nice to see your captures, but it's also, I'd, I'd imagine, quite nice to see sort of your progression and all yeah. that, isn't it? Yeah, no, you, you know what? Sometimes, mate, it's up, something just pops up and I'll go, oh, God. And I'll just click on one of my videos or whatever and I'll, 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 I'll watch back the good bits of it and think, oh, yeah, that memory was... Uh, that's, that's still stuck there, you know, and I can watch it back. I yeah. think, uh, yeah, that's probably where I get all my views from. <laughs> yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, refresh, refresh, refresh. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so on to the fishing. Yep. Um, I think probably a big chapter and quite a, a topical and sort of fashionable, if you like, chapter has to be centred around London. Yep. Um, two episodes of Forbidden Roots centred around there, but obviously a lot of your time spent fishing. Yeah. Talk to me about London for you, why urban or just general London fishing? What is it that sort of stoked the fire there? Well, I was walking around a particular park lake in the city with my missus um, once and um, we come to this little bridge and we peered over and I saw two carp, which now to this day that I have caught, but um, 
I don't, after that, I'd done a little bit of research, went home, um, started speaking to one of my mates about it. And a friend of his had actually fished it um, quite a few years previous. And he, and he showed me a few of the shots and I was like, that was the fish that I saw. Mm. And um, yeah, from then I knew that, you know, I was going to make that effort to start traveling up into the capital and, um, you know, and, and try and catch that fish. Totally different to what I was used to, you know. The rural, rural stuff, mate, being in the wilderness and fishing rivers and bits and bobs and like being in villages and stuff, you know, to going into into city centre and, um, and and trying to bring my style of angling to that, it it was totally different. But I love it, absolutely love it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the only reason I go up there. It's just I mean, the fish are on another level, aren't they? Some of them that are coming out of these out of these lakes like that. A lot of people just walk past and you'd never even know they're in there. But obviously we're anglers and we got our, our Polaroids on or anything and we're clocking them and um, you know, there's some mega fish to be caught. Um, Talk to me about that learning curve then. So you've gone from rural, wilderness, rivers into urbanised craziness that is London. First of all, how do you get about and find them? What tackle... Ha- what have you had any shockers early days in terms of going to places that might be non-fishing or might be fishing? It's just that whole negotiation of that scene at the time. How yeah. do you go about that? Well, I just winged it. Did to you? Be fair. Yeah, totally winged it. <laughs> um, I, my mate Bradley, who's um, done both of the uh, London videos for me. You know, we we were just um, sort of treating it as not little trips out. You know, we'd just take our rods with us. We wouldn't take it too ser- seriously, but we know what venues we're heading to. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if we get lucky, we both fish quite similar as well. You know, we're, if there's if there's a bush in the way or whatever, we crash through that, you know, to get to that water's edge or whatever. You know, we're both very similar in that way. Not a lot of things stand in the way of us getting to, you know, getting to that fish that we want to catch. And um, and we sort of gels quite well together. So we we could plan these these trips going up to London. We'd, I mean, I'd be picking them up at three o'clock in the morning or whatever, and then we'd be at the first venue by, you know, five. And then we just make a day of it, like sort of going from different venue to venue. And, um, it's, yeah, uh, well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, good points to it. And there's a lot of bad points to it, you know, nowhere to park. That's another thing. Right? I've been stung with some serious bills over the last couple talking? of years. Like, um, about a grand, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. <laughs> Yeah, I was get you know the um you got the congestion zone uh, yeah. zone and the uh ultra low emissions. When we was first going up there, I didn't have to pay the ULES, only had to pay the congestion. So um, obviously the years after that, I'm going up there not thinking I'm having to pay them, and um and for some reason all the bills that I was getting there were going to my old address. So I weren't oh. even I wasn't even picking up those um those ones. So three months down the line. No. They've tripled in price. And you try ringing them and you try to have a conversation with them and try to tell them the story. Um, yeah, they, 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 you can't get away with it. So you just in the end, they have to pay it, which is uh, a learning curve, I suppose. <laughs> Part of the process. Yeah. You said there um, about positives and negatives. So we're on negatives with regards to parking. What other negative aspects did you do you, did you find in terms of going in there with, with, with regards um, to angling? I personally yeah. haven't had much um sort of haven't had much negativity about it i mean there's always a few people in london isn't there that think you're going to blow blow up the scene um, yes i think that's a big one when when regards to anybody who's been in this podcast studio yeah who's fished urban london sort of venues yeah. is the whole protection of that scene by other people and people putting it on social media or making videos and blowing it up mm. and them being treated yeah, quite adversely with regards to, to sort of favour with local people who fish it or or see to fish it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like everywhere, isn't it? I mean, London is a little bit, has got its reputation for it a little bit more, hasn't it? But um, yeah, to myself now, I'm, I'm, I am trying to uh, take all that on board and not film any background or anything like that. I'm not in this game to upset anyone or anything anymore. You know, mm. I wasn't in the first place, but, um, you know, but there's still people that know where you're fishing. I mean, people that live around there, they're going to know, aren't they? Um, but when they, yeah, when you start getting negative comments and they're blowing it out of proportion or whatever, you're just bringing so much 
you bring so much light to that conversation, aren't you? And and that's where you know that's where everyone starts clocking on. So you know, I don't, I don't know. It's a it's a hard one, isn't it? Because I think I, I get where they're coming from. You know, they they don't want people like me, outsiders of London, coming in and you know and and filming it and putting it out there and ruining their fishing. But it's exactly the same for anyone that comes down to us, isn't it? You know, mm. like people that come out and fish fish lakes near us and and, and film and put them out, but. No, who am I to tell them they can't do it? So. How bad, personally, how bad's it got for you? Have you had any Not crazy really. death threats or stupid uh, things like that? I've had a couple, you know, that said when I see you on the bank and that, you know, be uh, prepared, but, you know, well, yeah, it's just talk, isn't it? At the mm. end of the day, most of it. What about general people within the community? There could be spectators, they could be yeah. people just passing on their commute. What What's that whole sort of scene been like with we've those. had a couple we've had a couple of funny ones you know when we're um when we're just stalking or whatever around certain lakes uh certain busy park lakes there's there's a lot of those sort of green people isn't there that um they didn't like they, they don't like you putting a a hook in in the fish or whatever like that but um we've only ever had a couple of them to be fair never when we've got a fish out right. um which has been which has been brilliant <laughs> um you know only only literally when we're actually fishing some guy Give us, give us some shit, really, about you know how cool we are and everything like that. What um, did you do? Just did you try and even like say? No, no, it could... was a bit weird actually. To be fair, now I think about it, because he was he he was he was saying it as to us as he walked past, yeah, and then he got like ten feet away, turned around, said it again, stared at us, and me and Bradley were just looking at him like is this guy, is this guy for real, and then it just. For about 200 yards, it just kept doing the same thing. Every 10 yards, just turning around, just staring at us, just like, I don't know, trying to be intimidating or something like that. I don't, we just carried on fishing. <laughs> there was a couple of fish underneath us, man. We're trying to, yeah, we're trying to bag those. But yeah, yeah to be fair, not, not that many. There's always a few strange characters. Talk to me there. about strange characters. I like the sound of this. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Just, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's just, in the first one, we had some, some women that went absolutely mental at us because we parked in one of her parking spaces mm. and stuff like that. Um, it wasn't even her car, even her space. It was just that uh, she'd had a we'd mucked up um, a sky engineer coming out to fix her um, fix her aerial because that's where our van was parked and that's where they wanted to set the ladder. Don't get in um, the way. So she of literally it. <laughs> she literally walked like half a mile around this lake to find us. She went absolutely insane at us. But it was quite funny by the end. We were just having a laugh of her by the end of it because Bradley's one of them sort of blokes and sort of chill that sort of situation out, try and make him laugh. So it was quite, yeah, it worked out all right in the end. But um, yeah, it was, she was funny. She was <laughs> the angry lady from Shadwell. <laughs> <laughs> mate, don't get between Shadwell ladies yeah, and the sky. I tell it. you, mate, it will kick it's off. It's a bit of a, it's, that's quite an interesting place. That's where I first sort of started. That was one of my first days on there. And the only reason I've I've mentioned that venue because it's out there, isn't it? Yeah, it's not, yeah, like, yeah. It's not a secret. For you, in terms of tactics, you said there when you're going into London, I'm filming these two episodes. You're sort of getting there early. You're planning your day. You're hitting a few venues. It's quite, quite. It doesn't seem you're not behind static rods. You're moving around to yeah. different venues and creating opportunities tactically, tackle wise. Yeah. What what has been your your winning methods, etc.? Just what I always do. You know, I've um. It's the way I've grown grown up fishing. It's that that's how I fish really, is um just sort of sight fishing, you know, fishing off the top. I've done I've done loads of it over the years and probably caught eighty percent of my fish that way, to be fair. You know, obviously not winter, but just slow sinking bread, you know, fishing off the top with dog biscuits, um or even yeah, baiting little spots in the margin, just dropping rigs on them. Um but I like that style of fishing. It's really it's exciting for me. And that's that's how I sort of pick out pick out the fish that I want to catch. Mm. Does, that, does that? I'm guessing majority of this fishing is taking place sort of summer, spring when when that's applicable. Winter time, how does that vary or does it not? Yeah, it does. Yeah, not all the time. You know, I yeah. can't do it at night or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I can uh, I can vary my angling skills, but yeah, that is that's what I like to do. You know, if I'm on limited time or whatever then I've got to make something happen. I can't just sit behind these rods and hope it's going to happen. So, um, yeah, especially, like, I'm on limited time. If we're going up there and we've got a day, then I need to be moving around and I need to be finding the fish. I can't just sit there and wait for them to come to me. 
And, you know, when we're leaving London that night, I'm driving home like absolutely knackered. You know, we're doing some serious steps in those those days that we're there. And, um, yeah, your calves are absolutely burning the next day, like where we've literally covered that much ground. But, um, yeah, it's paid off. It has paid off over the last couple of years. We've had some, we've had some great results, some mega memories and some, you know, some, some brilliant captures. And if you've got somebody who's trying to apply that style, because you said it's very synonymous with you and what you like to do, sight fishing stalking, floater fishing, essential items of kit, I'm guessing as much as you've got your car and you're parking it, it's not great, but no. you need to refine it down to quite minimal so you're travelling light. You do, yeah. What is that for you? How does that look? What, what gear do I take? Yeah. Um, literally just take, uh, you know, those, uh, I don't know if Nash still do them, you know, little stash packs. Yeah. Had, but I used it, I use it as a rucksack. Okay. And um, I, like I say, I've got my little uh, water box now with my camera gear in it. That goes in there, and then I've got, and then I'll just get a little pouch of end tackle that I'm going to need for for that day. You know, if I've got a change onto rigs or whatever, I'd make sure that I've got a few little compartments that I can make a couple of rigs up, and um, you know, just take the minimum bait that I'm going to need for that day. Mm. And my, uh, you know, my little my sawnoffs, my little net, and uh, and then I have a. Uh, I haven't unhooked him out of clips to the bottom, so I can I can stay pretty mobile, you know. I can walk around these uh, these venues with next to nothing, really. Yeah. And uh, you said there about captures. Yeah. For you, notable London captures, without obviously giving away potentially where things are. What what sticks in your memory, or, or ones that are particularly satisfactory? Well, the one mirror that I'd seen. Um, which was that fish that I talked to you about at the beginning where I've peered over this uh, this bridge and I've seen it. Um, it was probably around £40 pound when I saw it and I, I could not believe it. You know, I was looking at this absolutely insane-looking fish, full of scales, jet black, and, you know, I'd never even thought about fishing in the sea at that point, but that was enough, mate, for to, to get me going back. And um, I, it's one of those lakes um, that... You can sort of you can fish it, but it's very unclear where you can fish it and where you can get a ticket from. It's a bit like that, you know. You sort of you, you sort of got to know where to get one, um, and where it likes to hang out is probably in a part of the lake which you know maybe you're not quite supposed to be, you know. But everyone's everyone fishes it. Mm. It's not just me, and um, yeah, so. You know, we're we're up there on limited time, so we've got to make this happen. I can't sit there and uh, you know, <laughs> can't yeah. sit there and bait and wait for days. You know, it's it's a mental place. If you want to sit there and night fish it, I mean, I mean, the boys do, and I would, but I've just never I've never got round to doing it. It's just, um, it, yeah, it's uh, it's it could probably be quite a rough place, I should imagine, at night. But but getting back to that fish is. Uh, I knew I had to catch that, mate, and um, I, I was going to be putting in as much effort as I possibly could to to make that happen, and um, and I did. You know, the weekend previous um, to me catching that, you know, I had a bit of a bad spell up there um, where I lost all my gear, got it all robbed out the back of the van, um, which went. Pretty viral, actually, on yeah. the, on on Facebook, and that. I didn't expect to get that much, uh, you know, people sharing stuff and that. So thank you to everyone that did. Um, but yeah, uh, I've got so much gear robbed out the back of that van; it was um, unreal. Um, I was there for twenty minutes, but now I now I look back at it. I can remember some a couple of dodgy guys behind me in a car just sitting there, you know, and I've just walked off around the corner, and you know, they oh, must have. Right. Yeah, they must have just unlocked the van or whatever and done it. But I've taken a few more safety precautions now but, um, <laughs> on the van, but spent a lot of money on it now getting security. But you have to, don't you, when something like that happens, you've got to try and prevent it from happening again. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I lost everything as well, not just a little bit. I lost my drones, um, camera equipment. I, I didn't even have a pack of hooks by the end of that. Cleared you completely out. Yeah, because I had everything. Because I was off on my way to Walthamstow that night to do a night, oh. and um, had nothing. I literally had all my, I had all, all my rods nicked. Um, actually, the only f- the only thing that I did have left was they left me a barrow. <laughs> yeah, that's so, a yeah, big yeah. item. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. <laughs> see, I think they had a little uh, Vauxhall Corsa or something like that. So <laughs> before I don't believe that. 
Imagine that on crime watch. <laughs> uh, man seen with, yeah. a barrow with a barrow. Going yeah, through. Going it's pretty distinctive. That. But yeah, once I mean, no leads, nothing. So you know, just take it on the chin. Hopefully, it doesn't happen again. Um, but yeah. But the weekend after. Weekend after, um, I still had a little sawn off at home. So, you know, got myself a pack of hooks. <laughs> I thought, you know, I'm just going to go back up there because I knew if I didn't go back up, then that would probably scar me for a bit. And I knew that, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be fishing it the way that I do. Um, Because I mean, it did give me a bit of a knock. You know, Mm. it's not, not that. It wasn't that um, all the gear had gone missing, and it was just like how. Uh, you d- you don't know who's taking it. That's the worst part about it, you know. Is that but, what it is? Yeah, I thought. But I thought that you know you can't go chasing it. You know, if you got a you got someone who you can't just go around blaming someone, can you? Or if you haven't got any evidence or anything like that. So yeah, I think it's just mad, blatant in the middle of in like, the middle of the day in crazy. like a seriously busy part of London. So they've just literally chanced it. Someone must have seen something. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but definitely. you know, it's, it's one of them. Um, but yeah, so the weekend after my dad's. My dad, for some reason, said that he was going to join me. He's a he's a carp angler himself, but he's a very static carp angler. You know, <laughs> go on. Yeah, he's got one of the big boy Nash barrows, mate. But he can't get all his gear on there. <laughs> yeah, and I like him. He sounds like a good boy. <laughs> you know, he'll, uh, yeah. So, um, but he said he'd come with me. He wasn't going to fish. He was just going to come and yeah. sort of join me for the day, and we'd just make a sort of outing of it, and just you know have a beer, have a spot of lunch, and stuff like that. But we turned up at that venue. And uh, it was there. I've never seen it there before previously when I've got my gear and I'm trying to capture that fish, you know. Um, it was there. And I, you know, it was a in a very, very busy part of the day. Um, and everyone was, you know, it's one of those places where you really have to keep hidden, you know. So if you're going to cause so much attention to yourself, once you hook that fish right down in the further parts of the lake, sometimes I've had like 100 people around there literally watching me crowding round but um that was in a part of the, where you can fish so it was it was yeah it was um you learn you learn to deal with that i even yeah. had the police around there having pictures with me once with a calf <laughs> it was mental really yeah it was yeah because they uh, they asked to see my ticket and i had a ticket so it was uh, so it was fine and um the police asked to see your ticket yeah they did yeah right wow yeah so okay. it, yeah um but uh yeah the, uh, Later on that day, um, I say I've, I've I've managed to get into this little part of the lake and crash through these bushes, and it was there, and it was there with every other big fish in the lake as well. There's another common in there which I've I've still really want to catch. Um, so I had to make that decision. Then am I going to go for the big common or am I going to go for the big big mirror? And we made a pack, me and Bradley, when we went there, that I'd have the mirror and he'd have the common. So, um, you know, the mirror was more up my street, so I thought I'd, I'd go for that. And um, it took it with, I, well, basically, I started feeding it with a load of particle. I had I'd taken, like, a, a little plastic bag full of particle, and I was just chucking in handfuls and handfuls. But they got straight on it. They were starting to cloud the water up so oh, much, yeah. which I couldn't actually see what fish I was trying to target, which is all part of, part of my fishing, you know. Um so I had to wait for it to clear and stop introducing as much, and then you know I got my opportunity and it and it took it straight away. It was what did you put? Just free line of just free line bread. Just uh, and there's quite a few small fish in there as well. Mm. So you, know, you have to uh, you have to pull it away from the small ones and that. And oh, man, it's such a buzz, isn't it? When you, I've I must have been to that venue probably you know twenty thirty times. When you see that fish engulf that bread and you know and when you set that hook is there's no feeling like it is a and you've got to you're trying to you're trying to keep hitting try and keep low and try and um not bring much attention to yourself and you're playing this fish that you've been dreaming about for ages you know <laughs> but um it's all part and parcel of it but it went on the most massive run i could ever like to this day, I've never had a run like it. It's just kept going and going and going. And, you know, have you got sawn off? Yeah. You have, and right, they're strong, and I've caught the most amount of fish, but that was buckled right over. And, you know, when you, you're putting pressure on a fish, it's Weedy Lake as well, and I can just hear it creaking, oh. everything. But 
luckily it held me and I managed to turn it and get it back in. But, what hook? Um, a good sized hook? Yeah, twister, I think. Yeah. yeah. Size. I, to be fair, it doesn't really matter what what size hook I use because it, it's it's embedded in bread. So, yeah. you know, yeah, or yeah. whatever if I am freelining like that. So, but yeah, you know, a big wide gape hook or something like that, a straight point. It's, it held. You and got it in. I got it in. And um, yeah, I couldn't get. Well, dad couldn't even come over to see it. <laughs> <laughs> it was the like I say. I've there. I've made that memory with him. He was there. Um, I've caught this remarkable fish. I couldn't get him over the fence to come and come down and see it. But he was. It was good though because he was. He was. He was my lookout for it. Yeah, you need yeah. a lookout by the sounds of whatever yeah, course it did, yeah. from. Pictures but, done. Nobody seen you. No, no one's clocked no, on. Slips it back. And, and what did it me. go? Um, something like thirty-five, something. Right. But to be fair, I've had a few like that now, which it's not about. No, it's not about the weight for me whatsoever. Um, I've had a few recently down in weight, which um, which we'll come on to. But remarkable fish. That mm. really is like. That's probably the fish that I've put in the most work for over the All years. Right. It was, um, you know, it's been pretty mental. It's been a mental journey to capture that one. It's a mega fish. I'd love it in the album. Yeah. Regardless of the weight, as you say. Yeah. Other fish? It's a big lake as well. You know, oh, yeah. It's not, a, it's, it's no, it's no tiny little puddle, right? And they're going to be there. You've, you've got, a, most of the lake's not accessible either. But so you've got, a, you've really got to knuckle down when you're there and try and find the group of fish. I've only ever seen the big, the big lot a couple of times. It's um, it's it's mental. How many times I've been there, and um, you see, you always seeing small fish floating about, but the big girls, there's only a couple of times a year where they seem to be in these spots, and um, you know, I was just in the right place at the right time that day. It's a shame for Bradley because he never he never got to see that fish with me. But has he had a go for the comments subsequently? He, yeah, yeah, no, he fished that whole time with me, but then he sort of at the later part of um of the year he always seems to slacken off a little bit you know life or whatever he's a busy bloke as well so um yeah he did he didn't get to witness that that fish with me which as we started that journey together um yeah. he uh yeah I, I know he would have loved to have seen it he's seen it he's seen it swimming freely mm. but uh yeah maybe in my day. arms maybe one day <laughs> yeah um any other notable captures london wise that, that you um, can think of yeah there's an um there's another one which I set myself that goal of catching that one. Mm. So not too far from there, there's another lake which um, holds a mirror, which is pretty much on the same sort of same sort of weight. And it's remarkable as well. Totally different. Like, it's just really chestnut nutty and like mahogany. It's, like, it's an amazing fish. Not many scales on it. Big old shoulders, really old looking fish. And... Um, once I saw a picture of that, I thought I've got to have that in my album. That's a proper Forbidden Roots venue. <laughs> you know? Why do you say that? Yeah. Talk to me about a proper Forbidden Roots venue. It's no fishing. There's no fishing. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I don't want to, you know, give myself away too much or whatever, but it's, yeah. that one, that one's a hard, that's a hard lake to fish. You know, there's, there's, there's nowhere really you can hide. There's one spot. And, you thousands of people everywhere, all types, parts of the day. Is um, you know, there's there's police that walk around it, patrol it all the time. Um, but I've I managed to get in and out, mate, without with, without being seen or, or, which I know a few of the other the guys that have caught it, they've had some serious shit from it. I think. Mm. Um, but I was I was really unlucky as well. I, I, the other guys that have caught it, they've said they've seen it there straight away and caught it. I, I was visiting that venue as frequent as as the other place, and um, and never saw it. All I was seeing were these small commons all the time. It was just, it was never there, mate. I was I was getting there at like sort of five in the morning, no one about, ready to capture it, never there. Um, until this one day, <laughs> one day right at the end of sort of summer. Um, sometimes me and my missus we go up there and just have a uh, you know a bite to eat, a few, a few drinks in bars and stuff, and we just have a little walk around. It's quite a nice day out, isn't it? Just to go yeah. to London if that's sort of what you like. And we always end up walking around <laughs> one or two parks. <laughs> we walk around that, and right outside the calf, right where they photograph all the birds and everything, 
is the mirror. It's just sitting there, just sunbathing. Literally like a rod length out from the bank. Uh, how'd you go about that? I've looked at her and she's gone, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my gear in, but no, not not today. You know, like it's, we're uh, we're there to, you know, have spent a bit of quality time and stuff. But, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking about that fish and I'm like, it's up the other end of the lake where I thought it was going to be caught. Like, I thought that's where it was going to be. So 20 odd times I've been to this lake and I... <laughs> I'm looking at the wrong end of the lake the whole time, even though I have walked it, obviously, but never seen it. But it's, it it actually helped me in the end because that day I said, look, I'm I'm just going to go back to the van, which was not too far away, and I had a bucket of park and, and boilies in there. And I've run back, turfed it in, literally right where the, this fish was feeding and, and or sunbathing, and I, I rung Bradley and I said, look, mate, if there's any chance of me catching this fish, we're going back in the morning. And he's, um, he, he went, right, I'm with you, I'm with you. So we rocked up there five o'clock in the morning and the spot, I couldn't see, <laughs> couldn't see anything. Again, it was absolutely churned up five o'clock in the morning. And I thought, oh, man, well, what fish is that? You know, what am I doing? And I flicked a bit of bread out, just chancing it, literally chancing it, winged it, um, onto the surface. And, um, this big mirror came up, smashed the bread, and because it, it literally came up that quick, I hadn't even put my bail arm over. So it literally come up, took it, and spat it without oh. it didn't spook, and I thought I I think I went and sat somewhere in the bush and had a little salt for a bit. I was like, Oh my god, you know, I've been really putting in some serious graft to catch this fish. We went off to the other venue and um, Bradley wanted to go to these other places now. And I said, look, we've got to get back there, mate. I've, I've just got this feeling it's going to be there. And we went back and it was still feeding as heavy on that spot as when I spooked it, really. And um, and I've uh, got a second chance at it. You don't normally get a second chance, do no. you? But I obviously didn't spook it that much in that morning to stop it wanting to come back and feed off that spot. So, yeah. Piece of bread again? Piece of bread, yeah. I d- People think it's not, you know, it's not the, uh, it's not a good way of, of fishing or anything, but that's the way I fish. Don't get me wrong, you know, I'm fishing places now, mate, where I, you know, I'm casting 130 yards, three rods on the spot or whatever. But this style of angling, oh. manage, like, if you look on my, if you look on my Instagram and things like that, there's not many fish that I have on there, mate. They're ugly old fish, you know. Mm. I, I can manage to select the fish that I want to catch. I think that's the key element, isn't it? Yeah. You can be selective, can't you? Because yeah. if you fish that, let's say, conventionally, that venue, if you could fish it, I yeah. know that it, there's 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 sort of need to be quick in and out. But if you could fish it conventionally, and you fished it on the deck when you've got coloured water, all the silt being suspended and everything with regards to feeding fish. The chances of you actively targeting that one big fish mm. with all the other cricket bat commons and stuff that are in there, it's hard. Yeah, with a piece of bread lobbed on its head. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's just been in the right place at the right time, mm. isn't it, for like those venues? But again. Like I said, I, I baited that spot. Yeah, I made sure that that fish was going to be there for the the previous morning. And yeah, you know, sometimes they're not there. But in this instance, it was there, and I got my chance, man. And um, yeah, bigger than the other one, uh, about the same size. The same size. I, di- I didn't even weigh that one. No. I was just absolutely buzzed, mate. You know, it's, you haven't got time to weigh it there. No. You know, it's just literally get it onto the mat, take a few shots, a few clips, and put her back. But um, I got. It's not a very hard fish to catch. But it's the place. It's like it. it it's just everything that goes there. It's an incredible fish. That one. You like that in that buzz though of it being. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I do. I, I do. Like, once you've set that hook, what do you do? Like, there's been a few times where Bradley, I've got even I've said, can't do it here, mate. It's it, it's way too busy, and he's gone, Jack, I'm doing it. And once you've hooked that fish, what do you do? You've, you've got to get it in. You've got to sort it out. It's you know it's. <laughs> We've we've had a we've had a few hairy moments, you know, like in that in that sort of sort of pushed it a little bit too far. Well, he had. I've sort of got a bit better over over the years. Well, I sort of got a bit more anxious about it, mate. Yeah. Like if, if that's a sort of, I think that's what gets, grown up a little bit, probably. I think that's what gets me. Like they're amazing fish. I've mm. seen those fish; they're incredible. I would love to catch them. But I wouldn't like the whole looking over my shoulder element. Yeah. I don't think of of that. Let alone like the gear stealing is a bit of an exemption. But just the general sort of fishing, no fishing, and as you say, hooking it. 
I mean, realistically, what could someone do if you're if you're hooked into a fish and you're not allowed to fish there? What could they do? Yeah, what are they going to do? Yeah, well, like cut your line or whatever. But the thing is, when they see you've got that fish out and you're and you're caring for it and you're taking photographs, and what, do you know what? Every single time we've had a crowd, mm. we slip that fish back, we get a round of applause. It's mental. It's like famous or something. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's oh, been a couple of parks right, where we just yeah, getting a serious like we we built a serious crowd and it's um. It's not something that you wanted, you know, but it's memories, isn't it? That off, yeah, off, yeah buzzed off that. I can, uh, it, it adds to it, as you say. Yeah, no, I think, it does. If once once it's done, yeah. But I'm glad that venue's out of the way, you know, because it, 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 like I say, it was a bit of that tested it. To be fair, what about you? Said obviously you talked there in, in both of those about about applying some bait to an area, not necessarily fishing on the deck, but but just trying to get that opportunity to to single out that fish. With regards to London and, and your fishing, is it a case of you travelling in and baiting with all those venues or, or are you dropping on some of those venues quite cold with just a piece of bread? A uh, piece of bread. Well, do you know what I mean? Like, if you're sight fishing <laughs> yeah, from yeah. it's the one, isn't it? Yeah, no, no, it is, yeah. But it just seems weird, doesn't it? You just go fishing with a bit of bread. That's the <laughs> <Catching right. fish. laughs> You've no, got the is, picture yeah. to prove it, mate. Yeah, no, that's it. But, um, yeah, uh, well, if I know that I'm going back... The weekend after, mm. I have like those venues. The first one in particular, I fished it conventionally. Yeah. I have. I've been there and I've been spotted into out to the islands and bits like that, and I've caught fish like that. Um, but I don't have that time for it. You know, it's a uh, London's that place, mate. It costs me a lot of money to go there. Mm. If um, if I'm there and I'm paying you les and and uh, congestion charge, and then I'll do a night. The next morning, I've got to pay that again. Yeah, and I've got to make sure that I'm, you know, to park for. Let's put it into context with the with parking around these venues. Five fifty an hour for a diesel. <laughs> you know, how how long can you stay there for? You know, after maybe after six o'clock, it's all right. But you know, um, short short. I've got to try and keep those. Uh, those sort of trips shorter than... But you're not going in sort of maybe, let's say, using public transport, parking outside, dropping bait in certain areas and then revisiting. It's very much like, right, this is our session. Yeah. We're going in. I might put a bit of bait in if I'm coming back, but it's not a conscious effort to bait certain spots around certain waters. Um, Like I said, on that venue, I had done it. Mm. And I, I made an effort to fish it in the winter this year. But... It's just fishing it from that part of the lake, right? Um, getting up there, even even trying to bait out, it's just a mission. It really is. Like, you're trying to throw a spot, like, sort of over 100 yards or whatever, and everyone's, you've got to wait for for there to be a clear spot so you can cast. And everyone, you you generate so much, um, like, everyone is watching you. Yeah. Just, just. They're like, what the hell is that rocket that's going out there? You know, like 100 yards. And they love it, you know. But for us, it take, it take me about three hours to get a bucket of bait out there. So it's, it's just not, yeah, time. I did do it for a bit in the winter. I didn't have any success. You know, it's a big lake and um, I couldn't get to, obviously, where they were showed up. But, um, yeah, I tried. Mm. And, and I've done that style of anger. But it suits me getting up there, in and out, in, in the summer or in the spring. And catching the ones that I'll, I want to do that style of fishing, it's made it's a lot easier for me. Yeah, you buzz a lot off less, it, didn't you? lot less money as well. You know, it's cost effective <laughs> for me yeah. to do that. Yeah. So, um, the, for you, in terms of London, will you continue to visit it, or do you feel you're pretty done with your time on there, or well, will it always be part of like the buzz and, and and that whole in and out style that you like? Yeah, I love it. I do. Uh, it's I don't know. It's it just for some people. Some people have it, don't they? And some people they they couldn't think of anything worse. But I I love it. Um, and I've been I've been doing a bit on there this year. Um, but I tried to te- keep everything quiet. I don't know before I released my video or whatever. But I've had some remarkable fish this year as well. Mm. I mean, these two not one of them is as is special as the ones that I had last year. Uh, yeah. It's bigger as well, and um, yeah. Remarkable fish. First time I even set eyes on the venue. And um, that was pretty hairy. That was a hairy lake. Um, In what way? Again, well, this one's not so bad. um, But this venue, 
uh, I don't want to give too much away. I don't want people to hate me talking about it, but there's, uh, <laughs> you know, it has it has sports on it. Um, so I think a lot of the London anglers or people that have fish it, they fish it at night. Yeah. Um, but I was there and I just wanted to go and have a look. That's all that my intentions were to go and have a look, not to fish it. And uh, I've come, literally come over this fence and there's this little corner of um, of the lake which they were all shoaled up in because there's so much going on in all the other parts of the lake. That was the only quiet sort of space where they could get away from, you know, being splashed and hit with oars and bits and bobs. So oh, I couldn't believe my luck. I've literally turned up at this lake and <laughs> there's a there. massive stamp of fish there, man. And I'm like, and I've, Bradley was with me and I've, he still hasn't caught a London 30 in the two years that we've been there. And um, I, I said, "You go for it, mate. You have a go." Yeah, and he's um, he's hooked this. He's hooked this really big common. And <laughs> oh, oh, mate, I, I felt absolutely gutted for him because it was on for ages as well. And I see it roll, and it was a really good fish. And um, yeah, it just popped the hook, mate, right in front of us as well. Um, How big? You say massive common? Forty? Thirty-five, probably oh, that one. I mean, this big fish. sort of big fish for for, for chance in it, isn't it? And uh, yeah, popped the hook, and we thought. That's we've yeah you know, we've he's, he's sort of mucked the chances a little bit spooked it but I thought, I'm gonna go for a little walk walked up the bank and I literally peered over and um, I see this ghosty actually quite far up and that's what made me go up to have a look I see this ghosty and I've literally peered over the f- top of it and that ghosty was about sort of you know high twenties as well good fish because sort of. Um, caught my attention. I thought I don't really want to catch that, but I've looked over the top. Oh my god! I see this massive mirror. I've got. Oh, I've got to have a go for that. So um, yeah, I did. And once I've hooked it, it's one of those places, mate, which I wish I hadn't. You got. You got to give me some context. <laughs> yeah, you mate. know, once you, once you've hooked into that fish, it's um, it, you know, you you got to do it, haven't you? You got to land it, and you got to you got to get it out and take pictures of it. But there's there's so much going on around that place where you. You know, you could be sort of seen at any point, and uh, put it this way: like um, someone must have seen you. Well, you think so, but I was, I was, I was in a bush, right? Like sort of down close to the water's edge, rod tip low. The only thing that giving it away is when the fish is coming out yeah. marling. But they probably see that every day of their lives, don't they? You know, when they're when they're around there doing yeah. what they do, they're, they're bound to see fish coming out, aren't they? Topping. Yeah, I don't know. It's so hard to put yourself in like a non angler's head. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, they must see it. I yeah. mean, it's gin clear. They must see fish crash past their boats and that all yeah. the time. But um, but we we were keeping ourselves as like sort of low key as poss- we possibly can. Like, <laughs> we when we first got there, we was actually walking like little gorillas, mate, through this, uh, through the long grass, you know, because <laughs> we couldn't stand up because they'd see us. But what we didn't realise is at one point when we're, we're walking like these absolute idiots, right, and there's loads of flats right next to us and there's oh, these geezers out there all real hench working out, man, just absolutely cracking up at us. They're literally looking down at us walking, walking, walking like women idiots through, <laughs> through long grass. They must have been thinking, what the hell are these boys doing? But, yeah, it's part and parcel of it. <laughs> but you caught it? Yeah, and caught it was bigger. It. I caught it and um yeah, it was I think I think it was around thirty five pounds, something like that. Mm. But remarkable fish again. Oh, it's one of those lakes as well where it's um it's concrete mm. and um concrete straight from the bank down, but like a like really um steep. Like, yeah, yeah, it's it's not no, it's not steep, it's a oh, it's real gradual steep. like sort of uh decline and um and when you've got a fish like that in the net, you know, I've put it over it. And I'm just staying there calm for a little bit. And his back sticking out the water that much. Oh. And the um and a load of older canoeists and that came right past me. I thought, oh my god, oh my god, like I'm in I'm in trouble here. So I've snapped off the loads of branches and just laid them over the top <laughs> of them. <laughs> what, they've just gone by, the canoeists? Yeah, and yeah, I that that was probably the most sketchiest moment I've ever had. Like as I I, I tried to I try not to put myself in those situations, you know, but I had to take it. It was there. Nothing you could do. I sh- probably shouldn't have done it, but, you know, you sort of, you learn, don't you? Oh, but I've man. got that one now for the album. You'll do that 10 times yeah, out of 10. Yeah, I mean, what you? what were they going to say to me if I got it out? I said, sorry, mate, you know, I, have to, I mean... I, was, I found sorry, this rod I, on yeah. the floor and it was <laughs> spinning. I've caught this fish. I'm really sorry about it. Um, like, I've caught it. You know, I'm going to put it back unharmed, and, and which we did. And so I'm off... So I'm off fine, but yeah, it was just 
that that was really close to being caught. That was, but but that's that's the story of it, isn't it? You caught some mega yeah. fish, and you're not caught. You're yeah. not being caught yourself, which that's is it. all you can ask for, really. So from London, yep. I wanted to talk about because a, a number of your videos have been based on sort of rivers and river fishing. Now, I don't think to this point we've had too much conversation around sort of river carping. Yeah. But you've done it a fair bit and successfully. What What's well, the draw What's the draw with running water for you? Just another adventure on a different yeah, sort of venue? Yeah, it really is. Like, um, again, finding these sort of places where other anglers aren't going, I love that. I really do. Like uh, like I say, going back to the beginning, like if you want to catch that fish, you've got to go through exactly what I'm putting myself through. It's to get down to these riverbanks and you've got to cut a swim. Man, some of these some of these swims and stuff that I've cut over the years, I've cut, I'm bleeding, like literally ripped my arms to bits just so I can get to the water's edge. And um, I, I just love that adventure, um, just being out there, especially like... When you're night fishing, mate, you got all these rods on the spots and that you just don't know what's coming along, do you? Mm. Like on the, on some of these rivers I've fished over the years, I'm I, you never know. I mean, I haven't to this day. I've never. I can't say I've had a massive river carp. You know, I think it's just under twenty six pounds, my biggest river carp. But for for uh, down where I live, there's not. Isn't we're we're not sport for choice with rivers, you know. It's not like the Thames or anywhere like that. It's got some really, you know. But that's a big, big fish, fish. Like, yeah. The, in in the grand scheme of things, like twenty six pounds might seem small, but it, mm. in a natural like river where it's not necessarily known about targeted, you don't know what's in there. Twenty six no. pounder is an absolute massive fish. When I caught that fish, I can remember right, being like, I was really like, I was really quite taken back by that mm. when I caught that. I I felt like. You know, I put in some serious effort over the years to catch a fish like sort of that big over um like out of a river, um and I've never seen that in there. I've fished that river for years, and lo- I know loads of people that had, and then it just suddenly popped up one day. It was there, mate, right like right in front of me, and I managed to get that that chance to catch it, and um I've never seen another picture of it since. Wow, yeah. In terms of your intel, we talked about London and we, we, we're going on to river fishing, but in terms of where you get your information from about fish that are present in these waters, yeah. how how does that work? Because obviously London, you know, and it, it's sort of more widely known, but rivers, as you say, you've seen some fish, but apart from that, what makes you go onto that stretch to have a look at if there's the option of, of actually catching some carp from that? Yeah, well, I've fished a few in the past where I literally don't know anything about. Yeah. Um which I've caught carp out of there, but nothing, nothing massive. But you know, down by down by me, and, and it's all around the country, isn't it? Not many people do it. It's really weird. Mm. Like um, I, I'm not quite sure what is why. Might have something to do with you know the, the effort that you got to do the baiting, the baiting campaign. You know, it's a lot of money, isn't it? Or if you're you know if you if you've got to pay for the bait, and you know, it works out being quite expensive, doesn't it? Mm. But I've Again, going back, I think I've I've um I, I do get a little bit of intel, you know, from local tackle shop. I do my research, mate, like everywhere, you know, mm. like everyone does. But um uh I know around me most of the rivers. So, you know, I know sort of what's in them or whatever. Not sort of what's in them, but I know that it's it it holds carp. And um yeah, it's only one way to find out, isn't it? Start baiting it and fish it yourself. You talk there about Obviously, the fishing being slightly different in terms of baiting in areas, pre-baiting, uh, and then also conversely, instead of using sort of free line tactic, the sort of sitting behind rods element at the start. So mm. for you, tactically on rivers, let's talk about your pre-baiting for, for some of these results. Yep. How have you approached that? What have you put in? What areas do you look for? Because essentially... Not a lot of people do it, but it's a great learning point for somebody that might yeah. have a river local to them to try. It depends on what what type of uh, river you're fishing. I fish them. I fish them tidal ones, man. Which are which have been, you know, even for me, which I put up with a lot. I put up with a lot of shit when I'm fishing, man, and that tested me as an angler. Like when you know when you wake up in the morning, you're sleep deprived, mm. like, and you just think, what am I doing this for? I've, it depends what type of water you think because if it's tidal you've got to be you're going to get wiped out you, you can't do anything about it you're going to get wiped out quite a few times through that night before you know before it sort of calms down 
Um, but if I was fishing the tidal water again, and like previous, I'll look for the slacks, you know, and and make sure you're. I try to fish a tidal water with if it's on low tide. I've just found for me personally, um, when it's going back out, is a better time for uh, is better time for bites. It's, it's that's what I've I've learned over the years. But um, yeah, I, there's one down near me. I want to do. I want to get back onto tidal fishing. But it's you know it's a big ask, man. It's, mm. It really does test you. But again, if you're going to go for um, if you're going to go to for a, a river that's not tidal and stuff, yeah, just f- I try and I try and sort of pick a place where I think the fish are going to be held up. If there's a slack part of the water which isn't really flowing, it's um you know it's got an abundance of weed or lily pads, uh, snags. Try not to fish too close to them in the rivers because. If you've caught a river carp, mate, they charge, and there's not really a m- much you can do about it until you uh, until they've decided to calm down. You know they're powerful fish. Mm. Um, that's another thing. It's just brilliant, isn't it? When you when you get that take in that morning, and when they're uh, when they're blasting off, and you and you're literally just holding on for dear life. You just don't know what you're attached to, and that really buzzes me up. That I love that style of fishing, but um, yeah, just with the baiting campaign is at the beginning. I try to. I mean, everyone always says it, don't they? But I try to introduce a lot more smaller items just to clear that spot. At the beginning of the year, really, like sort of before before the opening season, not many fish. Well, it's not being fish and there's not much weed growth, is there? So mm. um, you don't really have to keep it as clear, but just keep keep that spot, introducing it, and try not to fish it, you know, until um, until you can see fish that are, feed, are visiting that spot frequently. Um which is hard, isn't it? When you see them there, you just want to fish for it. But I've I've literally I've done it over the years, and I'll just keep baiting and baiting and baiting. And I found that they're a lot easier to catch once they once they get used to feeding there quite quite often. Um, but and over time, you reduce the quantity of particle and go more boily, or or do you I do, stay? yeah. Um, to be fair, I've never like afterwards. I've never really, I've never really worried about just changing onto 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 particle um, onto boily. Sorry. Mm. Um, it's, they're always in my mix, yeah. Um, but I've never just like totally got rid of uh, rid of the particle and just gone in boilies. So I do put in a lot, a lot of boilies as well, but um, yeah. just because I'm going to be fishing a pop up or whatever over the top. But you know, it's, once they're feeding on that spot, man, they're river carp. You know, yeah. it's a free, it's a free meal for them, and they're just going <laughs> to uh, what? Like they they have hard lives these river carp. So mm. to get a free old meal there, and it's get and it's going on that spot frequently. They start turning up for it as long as obviously it's not a busy stretch and it's like a lake and everyone's turning up on a Friday night, leaving <laughs> on a Sunday. But which a lot of them are turning into, um, but the ones that I try and pick aren't. So. And rigs uh, yep. and and sort of lead arrangement wise, yeah, rivers are very obviously different environments to to let's say a lake, even though lakes have a lot of snags. But inherently, yep. you don't really know what's on a riverbed or what's going to come through. No. For you. What are your your sort of go tos in terms of that regard? Well, you're just dropping it literally, aren't you? Under your rod tips, in normally in um, in most situations on the river, I'm dropping it right under my rod tip anyway. So, you know, I ditch leg clip systems because I've had problems with them on the river because the fish, once you've hooked them, they run straight up behind all the reed lines and that, and then you can you can literally they can just pop that. Even if you're using the, the ones with the little clips, you know that hold the. Uh, hold the clip in place with a swivel i've had them bust that off mate and then um and then literally my rig tube and that's still there and the fish is right down the end so i've tried to try to drop it drop an inline lead now instead and just try and get that um try and use as minimal sort of tackle as i possibly can and and just use strong it's got to be strong and reliable mate on there because um like i say they go mate they really do but i i try and try to Get anything that's going to snag up down to a minimum. Um, like I say I almost lost a really nice fully once, um, which was a remarkable, probably one of the best fish that I've caught out of a river. And um, that that exact thing happened to me there. It literally went round the corner right up the top, and all my lead, everything's um, still right in front of me. It was a horrible feeling. <laughs> that's not the one. <laughs> and is it was it? on the other side of the river as well, so it wasn't like I could just sort of uh, yeah unclip it or whatever. Yeah, but I managed to pull it all the way back, and then. It thrashing in those reeds, managed to undo it, or managed to yeah ping it off what it was caught on. But ever since then, you know, you learn, don't you? So yeah. minimum, minimal big leads normally, if um especially tidal. 
Mm. Even in line. even when you got massive leads, mate, you can't you, you can't no. you can't stop it. You have a fish tunnel with her. Yeah, and they're savage. They are savage, aren't they? Like once it breaches that weir or whatever, if, um, you know, guys, you get fences, gates, everything. Don't you coming down? You just get your your lines get wiped out. All you the know time. it's going to happen. There's mm. just as you say, it's no sleep, isn't it? No, it really is. It's, yeah. a it's, not, it's not a it's not an overnighter sort of venue, is it? No, so um, no, definitely not. Something I want to go back to though is a couple of. Uh, Couple of tidal rivers near me, which um, which I'm not finished on. I've never really got started on there, mate. Really, you know. But um, yeah, it's got some nice fish in it. So I think it's nice. You can always it's all about location and where you live. But you can always, as you say, half the battle with rivers is is sort of finding fish. And if you can keep bait going into areas and 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 have a look, you can often see fish crop up that you might never have had a chance to fish for. It's a it's a nice fallback, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, no, it is. In terms of hook lengths, I was just going to say longer hook lengths for you if you're fishing in rivers. All depends on the bottom, doesn't it? Really? Yeah. yeah. You fish anything really short? Have you ever fished a real short hook length on a river? Well, this is a totally different story. But um, all you topography subscribers, or whatever, you if you if you watch my videos um, where I fished, a mate of mine told me about this little place which is really close to my where I'm living at the moment. Never ever knew it was there. It's like a little drain. Um, it's, it's, it's basically it's a river but it's, it's called a sewer drain or a drainage system or something like that and it's about two three foot deep at max right and um, I fished it through the winter and I had some really good success on there actually I was just going down to spating all the time and it was like minus threes minus fours and I was turning up and fish were feeding on the spot and I was fishing for them with my conventional sort of like five six inch hook links mm. every time doing me every single time and um I wouldn't have known that if it wasn't gin clear and, you know, I wouldn't have known that they were they were doing that to me. But I've, I, I managed to um, come up with something over the winter where, it, you know, I was really shortening my hook links down, um, fishing them in solid bags as well. And, um, man, every single time. It, after that, after I figured that out, I started catching on all types of different venues, man, um, through the winter, which I probably my best best winter to date, actually. Yeah. Um, and I'm not quite sure. What it was was the fish... They were coming down, but once they're sucking in the bait, because they're so cold and lethargic, they're not moving off, so they're not taking one bit of bait, moving off, tightening that hook link up or anything like that. But, you know, if they're, you know, a couple of inches above and they're sucking, it's tight straight away. Um, How short did you get down to? About f- about three inches, something yeah. like that. But it was, you know, a solid bag rig, basically. But, um, it worked, it, you know, my catch rate through that winter period after that... Every time, man, I was, nice. like, I was getting down, like I say, I caught a really nice scaly one in the winter. It was like, I had literally a touch under 30 pound, but brilliant, brilliant fish. I had it like, um, I had it like 12 years ago or something. And um, yeah, man, now it's like an old fossil. Uh, that, uh, yeah, I think it was like February time or something. I had a beautiful fish and on that approach as well. Yeah. Something I'm going to be going back to this winter, that's for sure. I've done a bit. Like, I love it because they've all got stories, haven't they? Mm. Like, they're so different as well. You never know what type of fish. You, you You go to some lakes and you know they're going to be scaly fish. Or like, I've just come back from the Cotswolds. Every one is an absolute yeah. scaly apple slice beaut. But like in a river, you just never know. Some of them are flooded out of fishery. Some of them are like inherent like cricket bat common. I love that variety. Yeah. Uh, but this, that place... Which I'm fishing, it's remarkable. The guy that told me about it, he'd had um, like sort of five or six fish out there, and he goes, "There's not many more than that, right?" And um, oh, wait, what, mate, they are like all of them are like they're not massive, you know. The ones that he was showing me, he's sort of like fifteen pounds or something like that, but they've all got tiny little love heart tails, mate. Their pecs, mate, their pecs are tiny. Like they've they've, they've yeah, they've, you know, they're weathered. Seen some life, lovely fish, and um, I've caught. 10 out there now, mm. something like that. He hasn't had a single one of them. And the ones that I've caught as well, I've caught some big ones out there. Well, not big ones, but, you know, I've caught I've caught two that are over 20 pounds out there. Um, and, yeah, he's never seen them. And I've still not caught any of the ones that he's caught. It's mental. And it's like a tiny little stretch, but he's so weedy. It's um, definitely one of my, my highlights over the last couple of years has been that. It's been brilliant. That sounds mega. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, like I said, I've done two two um, uh, films on that, on sipography, and um, I've got one for myself, which is uh, I've got like another five fish or something yet to edit. So, yeah, some remarkable, some of the scaly ones out there, man. Oh. Yeah. Good stuff. You've my appetite for sure. There was 
t- well, there's definitely one fish that you sent through when we were planning this very podcast that yep. a mirror that just, I just went, whoa. You sent it on WhatsApp and I went, where's that from? <laughs> I think that was my first, uh, my first response. Um, I'll definitely overlay pictures of it, but talk to me about, because obviously that's got a story, but talk to me about about that mirror. I don't even know where to begin with that one, mate, because, I mean, there's some fish, isn't there, that you see on, on Instagram or whatever, and you go, like, that is mega. How, where's that from? Or, you know, I've got to, I've got to catch that, man. And um, a mate of mine who's actually got a ticket on there now, he told me about it about three years ago, something like that. Mm. And he told me, Jack, it's right up your street, you know, you could probably, it's a really good stalking water. It's gin clear. Um, and it's just, and the place, like, let me just sort of paint a picture of it. It's, it's in quite a rough area, I'd say. You know, I don't know much about it, but I'll say just by looking at it, it's a little bit rough. And um, it's in the middle of uh, an industrial estate. But there's a river that runs in either side, um, which keep keeps the water crystal clear, but all sorts of shit gets flushed down with that, mate, into the into the river. And they have to unblock, where it goes out, they mm-hmm. have to unblock that like every day. Cause it's, <laughs> uh, but I've never known a weedy lake like it. I mean, I've fished in weedy waters over the years, and... Um, that place is beyond weedy. Like, um, but again, I've never seen a water which is as clear as that place. Tap water clear. Like, I've taken some remarkable drone shots this year of these fish. Like um, above, um, I, I don't. Uh, what's the What's the size of the, the water? Give me. A, it's give about me an acreage. four, five acres, something like that. So not massive water. And the head of fish that you've sort of there's observed? quite a few fish in there. Probably right. about hundred. Okay. Something like that, um, but the majority of the fish are are cricket bats. Lovely fish, really are. They're black. Every yeah. single fish in there is jet black. But there's one fish that I'm after in there, you know. And I've got to try and cut my time down because it, again, it's it's like a two hour drive for me from where I'm right. where I'm visiting. And I've got a few I've got a few things going on this year, so I got offered that ticket, and I knew that I had to take it because if I didn't take it. Um, I um, probably wouldn't get another chance. So, so it is an actual ticket? Yeah, it's a ticket. Yeah, it's a syndicate war. Um, uh, I don't know how many members, but right. you know, I'll just have a guess, 50 or something like that. Um, but and there's some good anglers on there. There's some good anglers because, you know, you've seen that fish, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, definitely, you? definitely. It's, um, it's worth putting some time in for. But uh, I've, um, yeah, we, we all went up for opening night. So, you know, a bit of a jolly, had a, had a few beers and stuff. And what I found with, was on this water were... Um, it's a massive snag, which is falling in. Big, big tree. And um, they all sit up underneath it. Uh, it's massive. It's a big old tree. And all the big girls sit underneath it all the time. And, um, and it, yeah, you, there's a little, um, there's a little sort of, uh, little pontoon. It's like a tree. It's, that tree that's falling over, he's sort of built some stakes into it so you can like peer right over the top. It's pretty magical, man, when you're watching all these big fish right oh, underneath you. an aquarium. You. Yeah, it, it literally is an aquarium. And um, that fish is always as far back oh. in that snag, literally under your feet as you could possibly get. It, and it was sort of, it was a sort of a mind game, man, because I was like, I'm just not going to catch that. I'm mm. just not going to catch it, especially at the moment. And apparently it likes to come out a few times a year. But it hasn't been out for quite a while. And um, and I was just thinking it must have been sulking in there, probably been hooked and lost or something like that. Because I have not seen it leave that spot in the, in the time that I've been up there. And I'm keeping in contact with the bailiffs and they're saying, no, it's still in there, still in there. And um, I'd managed to catch a couple of commons, you know, over um, over the, the time that I put in there. I'd only done two nights or something like that. And I caught a couple off the surface. Beautiful fish, but small. Um, and it was a bit, I don't know. I can't really, um, it's, I've got another water, which isn't too far from there. And I was fishing now, starting to put a bit of time in there and they've had to shut it because a lot of the fish have started, um, started keep dying for some reason, um, right. which again, I've been trying to get a ticket on there for ages, but that's a, that's a different story altogether. But if I hadn't, if they hadn't shut the lake that day, and I had my stalking gear in the van with another net, which I'm going to put that out, you know, so I'm not carrying diseases or whatever from that venue to that venue. 
I thought it's 20 minutes from there. I've got to go. It's a boiling hot day. I'm going up there. And um, I have my missus with me. You know, they, you know, they, it's, quite a, it's quite a sociable water, that syndicate that I'm talking about. They, they all take their missus or whatever. There's always barbecues, there's always beers going around. But um, it's yeah. It's getting better and yeah, better by yeah, the Yeah, so minute. I went up there and, um, and yeah, it's a really good venue for me because there's so much weed and stuff that is, that's, um, no, absolutely choked in corners and, that, and it holds a lot of fish. So it's a, you know it's perfect water for me to stalk. So that's a, that, that's another reason why I went up there. It was hot and I knew that I could probably have a chance. But I got there, that fish was in the snag. Mm. God's sake, when's this fish going to come out? And I've gone right up to the other end of the lake, which is about two foot deep, where the where the river's coming in. And um, I was, I'm trying to catch these small commons, mate. I thought I might as well catch something. I've driven all this way, whatever. <laughs> miles from the, miles from home. Suddenly, this mirror is just coming right underneath my feet, and I was going, "That's a good one. That's a, that is that's the fish." And I just see its little white tail. It's got a little bit of uh, is it on its tail or on its dorsal fin? And I was, "That's the fish." You know, ten minutes ago, it's right in that snag, and it's come right up the other end of the lake, and it's come straight up and started like mouthing scum, whatever floated, what other shits floated down through the river, off the surface. And I went, as soon as you see that, like for me, I can catch that fish. You know, if it's taking stuff off the surface, then you know it's game on, man. I can. It, that's where my my angling comes into its own, you know. And um, I've, I've, I sort of, I was waiting for it. It sort of it sort of drifted off a little bit, and I've I've just got to be patient. There's nothing else I can do, and I've um, I've tr- tried to follow it onto his um, next swim up, right? And nowhere to be seen. Come back. There's a guy in my swim. I've literally oh. I left that for two minutes, and he and I've come back to that swim, and there's a guy flicking mixes out in it, and there wasn't even anyone there, mate. Like uh, when I turned up, the whole lake's like there's never anyone there really. It's a beautiful lake. And uh, just my luck, I went, oh my, I didn't even say anything, you know, I just went, all right, mate, like, I thought I'd blown this. And I've gone back to that previous, and there it, there it was. you gone back to the swim next door? Gone, or gone back, back to the swim in next door, just because that was the closest I think I could be to where I'd mm. seen it. And have you ever been in that situation where there's, um, where there's so much weed, all you can see is little mouths, like, sort of yeah. poking out? And when you're on there for a bit, you seem to, you can you can figure out by the size of the swell and the size of lips that are coming out that that fish, you know, that's bigger, man, than what I've been watching. And I just see its little shoulders come out. It's got quite high shoulders when you watch it in the water. And I thought, that's it, that's it. And um, I've, I've flicked uh, flicked surface bait to it again, uh, free-lined, and I've just pulled back onto it. And it was a beer can. Like, like, like I say, a lot of stuff comes down. There's a beer can right on its nose and my bit of bread's right next to it. And you can see it. I've got it on video, and it's um and it's taking it. It's trying. It's literally trying to take the beer can this whole time. I go. I'm sitting there going, "Come on, come on!" And it it must have been five or six times. It was literally trying to take this beer can before it somehow engulfed my bread. Which um, oh man, what a fish! Boat battle as well. That's I didn't good. realize how dense that weed was. I thought it was just. I was literally thought it was just floating weed, and I was just gonna. It was just gonna work its way through. But it done me a favor because I struck. Hit it, it rolled. Yeah. Lock solid. Yeah. I went, oh my God. Like, and I just, <laughs> I left the missus. I went, hold this. The boat's right around the other side, right next to like the caravan part. And um, one of the bailiffs had turned up. He was around there just sitting in the swim. And you see me come crashing round, man. I didn't even, I didn't even have time to speak to him, but I jumped straight in the boat. Let, like I said, I left the missus holding the rod. Oh, mate. And, um, and yeah, got over there, and it was a two man job really in that boat. Obviously, I didn't want to take my missus in there, but um, yeah, I've, I'm trying to scoop this fish. I could see it was hit, and after I pulled that weed back, I could see it was it. I'm trying, literally, it, it's so dense that weed I couldn't even get the net underneath it. I was just literally having to sort of scoop it into so it. So it didn't, it didn't like when didn't you dart cleared, off, it didn't dart no, again. It, it just done a roll, there. just done a roll, literally, and just sort of laid there in the weed. But I, I'd, um, I'd, I've previously recently sorry um changed my line i don't know why i've always fished with 15 pounds straight through on my little reels and my stalking but i've gone back down to 12 i don't know why um hasn't made any difference to me but i didn't want to put too much pressure on it because mm. i knew what i was attached to um but what a fish man oh L- luckily it went in and um you know i did not realize how how 
I thought that was going to be real graft catching that fish. You know, when you really want to fish, I've been dreaming about that one a few times. And it, it once you really want something, it, um, it normally takes a while, doesn't it? Well, especially if you see it, depends on the fish, but if you're seeing it all the time laid up under it, yeah, under in a snag, snag yeah. like doing that's... nothing as well. Like, if you flick dog biscuits into there, quite a lot of the fish come up and take it. It's not having them. That fish has had one previous capture of being caught off the surface ever. That's what the bailiffs told me. And, um, and they've also told me if you just look at its mouth, they mm. said it's got like a pea mouth, like. It, it, they say it's got no problem getting getting your uh, like a forty mil hook bait in there or whatever. But I am so glad I've caught that fish now Done. because if I'd have seen it, seen how small its mouth was, it would have been playing on my mind that whole time that I can't catch this fish off off the deck because it literally it's like that. And um, I don't know how, but I've I've done it, man, and Sir, I'm mate, absolutely buzz. Incredible fish, like yeah. sometimes the stars align, but you've put yourself in the in the, in the right place in the right yeah. time to catch it, mate. I mean, I know some guys been there absolutely grafting in that off mm. for that fish, and um, oh, I've just turned up and caught it off the surface. I mean, I do feel a little bit bad about it, but it's nah. it's just it, mate, it's just how it went. fishing, isn't it? It's how it goes, but. I'm, I'm going to put that one up where we're with the nicest fish I've ever caught. That's a stunner. Absolute yeah. worldy. Yeah. In terms of surface, yep. we're going to carry on the same theme. An equally impressive fish that you sent across was your surface PB. Like, I wouldn't say your typical surface caught fish with regards to the time of year Yep. and with regards to the size of the thing. In regards to the venue. And the venue, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So three three things that aren't sort of your norm. Yeah. Talk me through that. A guy I used to, used to work with, I grew up a lot with him fishing, um, and he's um, he's, a, he's a lot older than me. He's like sort of 50 years old now or something, but I, I grew up with him working. And he'd always fished his place um, growing up, and he'd always talk to me about it, you know, through uh, through work or whatever. Mm. And, you know, I've fished a lot with him over the years. He's a really good mate of mine. He's, um, well, even when I was really uh, sort of like sort of 17, uh, 18, something like that, he'd, we'd always go off and fish different venues around the country and stuff. And he's, you know, he's he's probably um, responsible for, like you know, all my captures, like giving me that real buzz, man, over the years. Because he took me to all these venues which um, I wouldn't have never have afforded to fish or something when I was growing up, you know. He sort of, yeah, he like, he was a very generous guy, man. Uh, Colin, he dumped fish now because he got all his gear nicked and that, and he just, you know, he's sort of giving it up. But he was always fishing this venue after these two big commons that, that live in there. Not my not my traditional place, mm. you're right. And um, uh, it wasn't too far from work, about 20 minutes and there's two fish in there that break fifty pound at the right time of year. Um, very expensive lake to fish. What are we talking? Um, a, what's a, what's a ticket? Hundred pound for it's a, it's a members water. You know, like one of them. Sort yeah. of. It's a day ticket, but you got to, you know you got to give them hundred quid just for an extra bit of cash. And then you pay. And then you pay as you go. Yeah. Um, so it's like hundred quid. Um, and then oh, I'd like to say hundred pound a weekend, something like that. Okay. There's not not many fish in there. And I just want to say, it's a, it's a day ticket water with, well, day ticket club water, or men, members water, whatever you want to call it. But it's it's a small small water, about acre, two acres, something like that. And in my experience, hardest waters I've ever fished. Yeah. Hate them. Small Abs- waters. Hate big. small waters, especially low stock. There's probably 30 fish in there, mm-hmm. which probably is not understocked but it's certainly not overstocked is it and these are all big fish man they've i don't know where they've come from what's happened or whatever but all i know is there was two big commons in there one of them is one that i I took a took a liking to straight away like when he was showing me pictures of it but i never got around to fishing it until they started doing a winter ticket on there and um it was I think the ticket starts sort of like right at the end of October. It's like the 20, 20th of October, something like that. And I've I've booked on. I've made sure that I've booked on um, for five days, I think. I never do sessions like that ever. But I knew being autumn, them fish are going to want to come out. They're going to have a good feed up before before winter. Um, so I'm going to get on there. And Colin struggled on there over the years because it's, it's a rock-hard lake. And mm. I'm even going to say that now. I Today... I'm, I've never caught a fish off the deck, ever. And I've done some serious nights on there, never caught a fish off the bottom. Mm. Um, which, a bit ashamed of, really. 
No, not at all. <laughs> no, but, um, you know, uh, I've caught them, I've caught them the way I catch them, you know, but um, the first session, first morning I've done the night, woke up the next day, beautiful night, and it, I think it was about six o'clock in the morning, I see these fish around this island with their heads out, and it was it was mental because it was like end of October, but we're still getting 20 degree heat, something like that in the day, and um, I see I see this common come up, and I thought, oh, man, that's a good one. Um, and I, I, I caught it off my little stalking run. It was, um, which actually ended up being like the third biggest fish in there. It was 39, 12 or something like that. On mixers? Or? Um, no, that was on a bit of bread. Oh, like, he loves doing, a bit of bread, yeah, this boy. on a bit of bread. Yeah, come you on. You need a Hovis sponsor, yeah, mate. Yeah, that's it, mate. Right. What right. is the bread? What is the bread of choice? Oh, I haven't got a clue. Do you know what? Brown bread's always done me a lot better than white. Oh, my days. Yeah, like the black coffee. Yeah, yeah. black coffee, brown bread. No, I didn't think. The reason I always go for brown, I just think, um, you know, it's not so in their face, is it? That white, man, it stands out. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, it might just be a thing for me, but that's what I tend to use. But um, don't get me wrong, everyone that's watching this, it's not He's throwing right. us off, yeah. mate. He's classic sort of yeah. like, <laughs> going, everyone's buying like brown bread. Yeah, like it's not all I do is fish with bread. But, you know, majority of my captures, like I say, I've got, it, they're there, so I want to catch them, you know. It's not like I'm going to go, I'm not going to stick a five ounce lead on its head, mate, with a big old Ronnie wig, am I, if it's right there and it's mouth and scum off the surface. Mm. Like I say, I put myself in those situations yeah. where I can find them in the corners. Yeah. Like, I'll crash through that bush if I can see him there. There's no other way of getting to them, but I can get down in that corner where I can see him taking stuff. Um, that's the reason I can catch him from that. It's not like I stand on the end of my swim, <laughs> chucking a bit of bread out, you know, like a rod length round, just hoping that something comes up and catching it. Yeah, I'll yeah. put myself in that situation. But, um, so yeah, slip that one back, thinking, what a treat, you know. For the end of October, I caught that off the surface. Um, and then I thought, well... A day for the day, man. Sit behind these rods all day, like you know, and um, because you can't, you couldn't really move on there. Like at that point, like okay. there was a few bits, like little bays, like I was saying, you could sort of do a bit of stalking, but it's a busy lake, man. You'd only allow five on there, but five's packed, like really packed. But I just start putting out mixes, and man, I've never known the water like it. Like they just came up, just started smashing it. Like not not the big girls. But the small ones coming up right in front of me. Not the small ones, but like the 30s coming up, smashing them right, right in front of me. Just standard mixers, no? Yeah, just mixers. Like t yeah, Oil else. on them, anything like that? No, well, yeah, sometimes I glug them, but yeah. but This time just straight yeah, as just, they are. I can't really remember, mate, but yeah, just mixers, man. Right. Just pinging them out. And um, yeah, they were they were taking them, and um, I could see this one fish. It's like two islands, and there was um, this big one sitting right in the middle just taking the odd mix out. And I could see it was so much bigger than anything else, man. So I've cast it out there. And um, I, all I can explain it was, like, the way it came up, it looked like a barrel. It literally looked like a barrel coming up, man. And I just see it take that mixer. And um, the float just, you know, when it slowly drifts off, man, <laughs> and I've managed to strike into it. But, oh, my God, what a fight. That was on a 12-foot 12 12-foot 12 um, floater rod that I had. And I don't know what, a 10 pound line or something like that, oh. 10 pound zig, zig flow. And um, I, c like, after an immense battle, it went in the net. And obviously, I was like, oh my God, look at the size of this unit. Yeah. And I borrowed a net off a mate because it, he has to have 50 inch net. And I didn't have a 50 inch net. Mm. Like, I don't know what, because they have big catfish in the other lake and stuff. It's just a fishery rule that you have to have a 50 inch net. So I borrowed this net. And my mate doesn't look after his gear very well, you know, like, bit like me really but i borrowed this net off him and it must have been a little bit bit shabby mate it was it must have been a bit rotten or whatever which i didn't pick up on and this fish has powered i've never known anything like it so i'm looking at this fish going oh my god that's 50 pound and this thing has smashed straight through the net oh no and there's loads of guys standing there with me and i'm still holding the arms mate and i'm watching the fish fucking swim off so it's ripped the mesh and gone through just powered straight through it like it wasn't even there. And I've, I've, I've just gone, oh, my God. I looked at the guy and go, did that just happen? And suddenly the line started picking up. Oh. And there's bar barbless hooks in there as well. Make so even way worse. For naughty. <laughs> barbless hooks in there as well. So the line started picking up. So I've threaded my rod straight through the hole in the net. Skills. Um, back in contact with it. But then it's right around the tip about five times. So obviously when you put your rod down, it's doing rolls and stuff. 
Mate, he's taking big lunges and my lines <laughs> wrapped around it. I was like, oh my God, like this is it. I'm back in contact with him. I'm about to get fucking busted up here. Um, but, you know, something was looking down on me that day, man. Your and name's I managed on that. to get another, I got another chance at it, managed to bag it, and then I made sure I double netted that one this time. But Did you, With the same net? Surely not. Do you have mate? No, no, mate. You went the, the guy. I can't remember his name, but I mean, fair play. Cheers for that. He <laughs> went around and got me another net. I think he brought around two nets, man. We literally we double netted it. What would you have done if you were on your own and you just had the the rip? Gone for it net? again. Would you? With Gone the same for it again mesh? and just sort of rolled that bit up round or or collapsed the net and rolled it up really quickly, mate. Keep it tight until I got a chance to put her in the sling. Headlock. A bought <laughs> a forty pound, nearly fifty pound yeah. comment. But well, do you know what, man? That that was the best red letter session I've ever had because then um the next day I I, I caught another one of their big residents. It was like drop tail or so. We had, I've just skipped straight over that one, haven't I? So that that fish there that just busted the net. You know, it was the big one that I I went there to catch. Caught it the second day I was there, and um yeah, forty nine. <sighs> 49.8, something like that, I That's think. That's a beast, isn't it? Yeah. Um, oh, man. Mega shot as well. Mega fish. Yeah. Like the colours and that in the backdrop yeah. and just everything. It just looked really, really pucker in there. It's like October time. Yeah, like mega, really, like, yeah, yeah, really picturesque, isn't it, that time of year. So Lovely you had a 39, a 49. A and 35 said, and a 30, yeah. All off the top. All off the top, yeah. Do you know what? They could not, like the bailiffs and that, just, I mean, they really, they didn't know even know what to say. Like, that... The lady who owns it, she said to me, she goes, are you sure you want to go on Kingfisher? That's the no late. She goes, um, it's it's really hard. You know, <laughs> you know, not knowing that I've, you know, I fish these waters all the time. You know I am? I went, well, yeah, YouTube I, channel, mate. You know I am? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you just said. Yeah, I just went, yeah, yeah, well, I'll give it a go, you know. And then to come back mate, after my session and go, I've done that, 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 that. And you just watch her, watch their faces. I was like, you know, I loved that. It was brilliant. Did many people float fish it at all historically not, um, or not? There was a few, um, but after that, yeah, after I I sort of ruined it really because I put it out um, on my video. But I was finished on there, you know. But again, after that, I still know people that are catching fish out of there off the yeah. surface now. But you don't see it as much. I mean, I'm still a member on their group on on Facebook. I don't see the big girls coming out, mate, at the moment. Mm. Um, but there was another one in there called the Pretty One that done like fifty three pound in the end. Um, never got a chance to get that one under my belt, but you know, I'll take that and never, get it out. Yeah, never say never. But I, I went on to capture. That's that was the hardest fish in the lake to catch. It was called the Upfront Common. Didn't really come out. Done like I think it had been two years or something since I, like when I when the previous person caught it before I had done something like two years or something in that small little lake without getting caught. And right. then um, yeah, I caught it twice. I caught it twice. <laughs> yeah. I thought, I, like the, you, I thought the second time, I thought it was the pretty one. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I would have left it alone. Off the surface again? Yeah, off the surface again, yeah. But this time, it was a bit weird, man, because it was um, it was just after spring um, when the, the bream was spawning. Mm. Every single fish in the lake, look, just there at the right time, mate. And they were just they were just mouthing all the bream spawn. And I thought, oh, I can catch any fish there, man, really. And I just see this big common with his back. Like, it was quite far away. And I thought, that's the pretty one, but it wasn't, unfortunately. But I caught that on my sawn off a second time. Go on. That really did, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I tested it. it. <laughs> yeah, I did test it. It's not so much the, um, it's not so much the, like, the power of it. It's just the, the sheer weight of that fish, man. Yeah. It was just, yeah. It really but also, when you got that short length of rod, it's yeah, so, it, that's it. It's, you got, you got used to playing. I love it. I, yeah, I, I, I couldn't think of a better, uh, better size rod for me, man. I yeah, because it. it's like when you're crashing through the bushes and that, like when you when it's collapsed, it's like that, isn't it? Like it's not getting caught and stuff. And, no, and um, it's just I I prefer playing fish on the small rod as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the nets, mate, you can literally get them right underneath. It's not like that rod tip's got to be so far back, is it? And you're just like sort of leaning or anything. They're literally there. I yeah. don't, don't know. It's just yeah, no nice. personal preference, what isn't it? Fish. Yeah, no, remarkable fish, man. Uh, um. Yeah, still my never done fifty for me, but I caught that, exact same weight both times. Really? Yeah, I I had to weigh it the second time. I didn't yeah. even want to get it out of the water, but I had to weigh it just in case it done fifty pound. Didn't so I slipped it back. Is that your PB UK wise? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. done a few forties, man. Right, um, and then sort of your one. recent chapter, which I mean, we've been careful throughout this not to blow anywhere because a lot of places are fishing wise a bit. 
not I'm not going to say shady because that's not a very hot, nice term but in terms of legitimacy and fishing it you're not necessarily allowed to or you don't want to blow it for people that are already there your mates that are still fishing it yep. but this last chapter in particular I mean you're still actively fishing this place oh, yeah, and in yeah. terms of the other venues being quite intimate the last one definitely yep. smaller this thing is an absolute sheet of water it's a proper beast of a war. And completely yeah. different. This is like, you've gone from one extreme to another, haven't you? Yeah, I really have. Like I say, I, I test myself as an angler. Uh. I really do. I put myself in those situations, which is going to, going to make me better as an angler. And um, all I can all I can sort of like describe this water is, is like um, it's probably the closest you could get to European fishing mm. in England. Um, How big is it, mate? It's a, over what were you 120 about? acres, yeah. something like that. Um, it's just a water... Um, just it, it, it's just remarkable. Absolutely love it. E- ever since I started fishing it, I've fallen in love with it. It's a massive pit in Cambridgeshire, and um, it's it's just as soon as you get to it, you, you feel like you're alone. You know, you're out in the wilderness. It's an adventure. You know, you know there's some good fishing there because I've seen it. It's crystal clear. Um, but since I have been fishing it. I've bought like other styles of angling to my um, uh, other bits um, to my angling. Sorry, mm. it's um, like a lot of boat work and stuff. Like um, I've bought myself a boat. I'm not like a like a like a, a massive boat. Um, like, you know, like one of the good old like Raptor blow up boats. Um, and just when you put your gear in there and you set off sail, man, it's just something else. Absolutely love it. It's been. It, it's it's been a real journey so far, and um, I'm I'm still fishing it, and um, and I'm going to continue to. Uh, over what the have next you seen? What have you seen? Well, you've caught, but what also have you seen before you'd had any sort of captures be under your belt? When you first go on there, you're looking for areas, you're looking for fish. Yeah, well, I've seen a lot of black commons in there, mate. Which you know, that's my that is my what I fish for. You know, I like to fish for pretty fish. You know, it doesn't really matter about the weight, but. This has got weight and and looks, man. This lake and mm. um, there's some big fish in there, big wild fish. Put a um, number on them. Go on. What? How big? Yeah. Don't know. Talk of a fifty. Talk of a fifty. Yeah. Um, but you know, That's big. There's a lot of backup fish to go with it as well. Um, I say I want to be sort of careful. Don't want to upset anyone talking about it. The other people that are fishing it. Um, but yeah, it's been a massive like adventure. Like as soon as you put your gear in in that boat and you sail off, it's you're not you're not in touch with anyone else anywhere like at all. You know, you're on your own. You're cutting swims. You're you're prepping spots, and um, you know it, it's just you and the lake. That's all. You haven't got to worry about other anglers that are fishing it. It's um it's it's a proper nice bit of fishing. You know, when you're out there, you think you um. Other people are going to turn up or whatever. I haven't seen another single angler since I've been there. Um, and it's just been brilliant. Like, it's it's, it's a baiting campaign as well. Mm. Something that, like, I do I do on the rivers, but in in on a vast, big water like that, you have to start introducing a bit of bait, don't you, to, to make sure that when you're turning up there, there's going to be some something there for you to fish for. Um, but it was a bit of a grueler, mate, at the beginning. Like, um... Me and my mate, we got super buzzed about it, you know, like really buzzed. And we we turned up sort of February time, something like that. Mm. 120 acres, half of it's frozen. <laughs> half of it's frozen. I go, oh, mate, like it looks massive anyway when you're looking at it. And um, yeah, we turned up, it's frozen. And um, we, we still we still decided to have a little walk around, still put some bait in and everything. And we decide, you know what it's like when you start a new walk, you yeah. get well excited, don't you? And um, yeah. That night, uh, not that night, sorry, a couple of weeks later, we decided to do our first night um, and never had anything. Um, carried on baiting that spot and I still think we was a little bit early for that time of like, that that part of the lake. Um, but as soon as spring came and the uh, and the sun came up, I started catching them and not my conventional way. You know, I've, I was uh, I was seeing these these fish on our spots frequently, you know, and um, I, I caught one sort of l- early April, something like that. It was only sort of scrape of 20 pound, but it was a start for me and my mates on. Um, it was, uh, yeah, 
she, you know, we couldn't believe it. I'd actually caught one, man. It was yeah, brilliant. first bite's always yeah. the hardest, especially on a place yeah. like that. Like I say, this is a testing place. So I can't really say too much about it, but it is. It tests you as an angler, like like physically and mentally. Like I've I've I've, I've fished winters all my life, but this place in particular is freezing, mate. Like I've had to come. I invested like in like all proper thermal clothes, mate. Proper like you know waterproof thermal socks, everything, because it we mate, the the stuff that hits you down down there man is um that that weather that hits you is just mental especially like being that big and open mm. you're getting hit with them elements and if you want to fish on the front of that wind there's no comfort about it mate there is no comfort um but yeah the session that we're we talk about was um uh, we booked a bit of time off work uh, well tom had and uh yeah he we was going to do four or five nights up there in our swim that uh, we'd been prepping and um we'd done two I think we'd done two nights and not a single one of us had a fish, right? And he's, all my camera equipment and stuff um, had, had totally, totally wiped out for some reason. My phone battery, I forgot my, uh, my my power pack. Yeah. And I was sitting there, I was like, oh, nothing, uh, nothing's charged, anything like that. And Tom said to, he was going to move off into one of these bays because it was starting to get a little bit warmer. And he said he was going to move off into one of these bays and just wait for him to come in. And so he went and done two... No, he went up there and f- carried on fishing, and I'd gone home. And it's, uh, it's a two-hour drive from me. Mm. So I'd gone home, and I said, look, Tom, if I feel like I'll be back tomorrow, man. Don't worry about it. So I boated all the way across the lake, you know, driven two hours home, had a good night's kit, recharged everything. Come back the next day, and I was fresh, you know. I've come <laughs> out, man, and I'm boating away. He's still sitting in the same bush, swatching the same rock motionless bobbins, man. Actually, he caught a couple of tinkers, I think. That's what we've named his boat boat now hms tinker <laughs> so he seems to catch on there his old tench but um yeah no he's uh uh yeah he's still sitting out there man um uh i mean fair play to him he's, i mean he stuck at it and he waited for him to come in but it just didn't happen mm. and i've moved from our original spot right and my boat's reasonably big but it's a proper like we haven't got an outboard so we're rowing we're rowing it right and it, if you've got your bed chair and everything in there, yeah. a bit of a squeeze, you know, because you're always hitting your bags and stuff. But, um, yeah, I've, 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 um, I've boated over to this island and I thought, this is this looks good here on the back of this wind. Um, it's taken me a couple of hours to get there, mate, like properly set up, start seeing fish right over the other side of the lake. You know, I'm seeing it like 60, 70 acres away, man. I'm just seeing fish come out like dolphins right over where we've been putting our bait in. Right, so you have been putting bait in that area. Yeah, yeah. and um, I said... I rung Tom, I said, Tom, they're on our spot, man. Like, they're, they're there. And he's like, I'm just going to sit here. I'm just going to wait for him to come in. Like, my rods are perfect. And I went, right, okay. And this time was ticking, mate, now. It was like um, 8 o'clock, something like that. And I thought, I've got to go for it. And I've um, loaded up my boat, gone straight straight across there. And um, I didn't end up getting the rods out until like 11 o'clock at night, something mm. like that. And I woke up in the morning, man, first take, and I had a... Um, uh, proper good boat battle with that one, sort of thirty pound, thirty pound common, and you know we've gone a long time since we caught a fish. You know, like since my twenty, my twenty pounders uh, beforehand. They're not the fish in there. They're wild. Yeah, it's mm. really weird because I thought I'd be able to catch them the way I catch them, like in the edge. As soon as you put a bit of bread in front of them or a dog piss, anything, shoo, gone, gone. Yeah, absolutely. Like, do not want to know. So that's the only way I've figured out how to catch them now, sort of bait and weight or or fish around those spots. But so yeah, I dropped all the rods out that night with that with the boat um, over a amount of bait because I knew the fish were already there. So um, yeah, next day he turned up, caught one, and then I ended up casting them from the bank. Um, just little orange pop ups that I've been making. Um, uh, little washed out ones, and I'm like, flinging out singles. And um, yeah, mate, it wasn't, wasn't long before that rod was buckling over again. And the takes on there are insane. Mm. Like, I've never known takes like it. I wish I could get one on camera and got one on camera yet, man, <laughs> but they are insane. And um, I mean, there's no there's no warning bleeps, man. It's just full out action. One time. Like, bang, yeah. And um, like proper. You've got your rod tips up as well, man. So it just looks remarkable. But yeah, had one that. Uh, um, that next one, I think it was thirty-four pound. Wow! Like, you know, like from a water that doesn't get much, doesn't get much pressure, mate. Not a lot of people fish it, or if they do, it's so big. These fish don't get caught, man, that oh. often. Do you know what I mean? So I've caught, yeah, that one was thirty-four pound, 
And I thought, how good is this session going? Yeah, and I sounds... thought, well, I've got to keep it going, man. I've got to keep this. I've blasted uh, another what single. Rig? What rig are you, you I was, was fishing. On? Do you know what? I've been fishing hinges that whole time yeah. on there. Um, and then I don't know why, but I moved over to Ronnie's. Um, I have no idea why. Okay. I don't know why. Um, just I just thought they were just maybe a little bit too blatant because the weed wasn't totally up at that time mm. of year. Um well, on the spot, the weed wasn't up on the spot, but um, I just thought, yeah, I could get away with fishing something a bit closer to the deck. So, um, yeah, so I changed over to that. Um, and it wasn't long again, man, before I got another one absolutely melting off. And this, did I, yeah, I just said I'll ping that one, um, ping that one single hook bait. That's a lie, actually, because that morning, five o'clock in the morning, it was dead calm, total mill pond. Um, it was after I caught that 30 pounder and I'd gone out and I see this massive carp hole. And this mm. lake is mental because it's it's so shallow on the bit that I was fishing. All types of different bars, and it, I've never known anything like it, man. It's a, just a carp mecca of a place. And I've come come over this bar, and there is this huge carp hole. And I've looked at it. There's nothing there. Like you know, I thought that's a spot, man. And I've laid my rig onto that, and that one that was the last rod. To, um, that was the last rod to go that day. And the majority of the lake is just just commons, man. Big commons, yeah. and. Um, I could not believe it. In 120 acres of all these bays and bits and bobs, I caught the the big mirror that was in there, man. It was, um, I think it was, I think that one was 33 and a half or something like that. I have seen pictures of that one, so I knew that was in there. Okay. Um, but again, you know, 120 acres. What a hit of fish yeah, that is. Yeah, and there. that fish is apparently over like 50 years old, but wow. mega, mega fish. Really, really. Um, but yeah, since then I've had a, I've had a few more. But nothing, nothing on that size. I couldn't believe that the hit of fish that I had then, like three thirties, and in in that's that. good angling. Yeah. Man. That sounds like an incredible place. To, it is to like, fish. like I said, like, you can just move from one part of the lake. Like we was there the other night, and we've turned up at, like on, on darkness, and we're just rowing all our kit out there, man. It's like a mill pond like, at that time of day, and you're just looking around, and you're just like, um, I could not ask for a better place to be. Mm. You know what I mean, like. Yeah, it, it reminds me of like um what what you watch what watch things on YouTube, don't you? With these uh, these guys fishing these big old like European lakes and stuff like not many people fish it untouched really and just just wild. It's yeah, a, that's all I can describe it as a massive wild pit. A bit Incredible. of you, mate. Yeah. A bit of you, Jack. That's been brilliant, mate. I mean, we've been through some select chapters. There's tons documented on your channel, but I've thoroughly enjoyed it, mate. It's it's great to hear your like passion and and sort of how you've you've worked so hard to fit in normal life, YouTube stuff and filming, but also finding places which sort of stoke your fires. Cause yeah. like, you know what I mean? It's not the monotony of what is normal. I'm not saying it's monotony cause I do it and I enjoy yeah. it. But for you, that's you and you, and you've searched it, mate. Yeah, no, but well, cheers for having me. But no, yeah, mate, it's like I said, I've, I've done all that other fishing, man, for over life. Yeah. Uh, through the, through the years of, um, I've fished all these, uh, like linear complexes, mate. And, and uh, Fawny and places like that. And um, I enjoy it when I'm there. It's yeah. not that I yeah, don't yeah. enjoy it. It's just, um, you know, I just... You can see you my... can see how like enthusiastic yeah. and how much it like, like just, grabs you. Yeah, just buzz off that. I just... Just the wild... Just being out there, man. Just yeah. like, I love that part about it. But Before I let you go, yep. you've got the Nash Quick Fire questions. I don't think I've sent you these, mate. No? I've custom them for you. Custom them? Custom... Well, I do now custom them. We've got to wing I've, these, have I? I haven't got to wing them, mate. Quick fire answers. I'm, I'm interested in some of these answers. I don't know how well I've, I've customised them, but... Right, okay. I've done my best. Oh, I'll give it my sh- I'll give it the best shot. Ready? Let's do it. Three words to describe yourself. Oh. Hardworking, adventurous. Um, um, um... Oh dear. That's about six. Um 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 oh dear. Um 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 oh hard working, adventurous, uh one more. A uh, what? One more. Hard working, adventurous. Hard working will count as one word, even though I'm not sure if it's two, because my grammar's pretty poor. <laughs> hard work adventurous, um yeah. Uh da, 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 um This is good. Right, I'll uh, get a quick fire question. I don't really want to say something about myself. Um I don't know. Can we go with two? Yeah, we'll go. Yeah, with hard two. work and hard adventurous. Hard work and we can split and adventurous. Yeah, I mean, if I wasn't under pressure, I'd probably um, come up with something. But I no, am. this is the whole point of pressure. I like <laughs> this. You've dealt with this well. You've got through the first one. Yeah, yeah. Plain like sailing. The first, the first yeah. bite's the hardest. Sorry mate. about that. I know no, you're cool. <laughs> um, one YouTuber that you'd like to collaborate with. Doesn't have to be fishing. This could be any YouTuber. Um, 
just because of adventures and stuff. Smear. Oh, yeah, good pick. Yeah. Good pick. Um, One thing that you'd remove from carp fishing. Trolls. Trolls. <laughs> Those things that live under bridges. <laughs> that do, innit? Yeah. I yeah, like life that. would be a better place, wouldn't it? Without... Uh, classic Nash quick fire question. If you had to choose one, drum and bass, drum and country bass. and western. Yeah, I knew that one was coming. I listened to your drum and bass. A few times. Yeah. yeah, I could see it in you. Yeah, no, can't a bit be country and western. Fishing undisclosed venues, always a bit of a wronging in him. Yeah. So that was always going to yeah, come. Yeah, you know, I like a little rave here <laughs> and there. <laughs> um, would you rather be a TV star or a YouTube star? YouTube, just because I've built it up myself. I like that. Um, carp that you wished you'd caught? Black Mirror. Mm, it's the one, isn't it? Yeah. I love it. It's a bit of me. Um, what would you take? A million subscribers or an unknown, uncaught UK 50? 50. Final answer. Final answer. Final take friend. it. Okay, yeah. I'm just checking. That's what I'll do it for. I like that. Um... Uh, on your toes or bait and wait? On my toes. Would you rather fish the Thames or the Ebro? Thames. Nice. Final question? Yep. Date night with the missus or hit the lake on the end of a big pressure drop in a fresh southwesterly? Of course. Take the missus out and drink her. Yeah. Oh, to a lap round the park <laughs> lake with some bread in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, make sure I've got a bucket and a stalking oh, in the back of the van as you well. You know it's happening. Just in case. Jack, you're a legend. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for watching and listening. Please subscribe. Leave a comment. I'll see you again soon with another Nash Off The Hook podcast. Jack, thank you so much for coming in, mate. Thank you very much for having me, mate. Really enjoyed it.